sort you that out. It's okay. It's not okay. I told you to stay in bed. You die in bed. And you'd rather die with your boots on, is that it? Like the day after tomorrow? <laughs> it's now to laugh at your daft thing. Doctor told you to have a rest, and that means you to stay in bed for a week. So drink your tea and get upstairs. Now what are you grinning at? I'm okay. I don't understand you. I just don't understand you. If your solicitor said black were white and your accountant told you to post your money down grid, you'd believe them, wouldn't you? But let the doctor open his mouth and Furclough, pig-headed Furclough, does just the opposite. That's what comes of a free health service. If I had to pay him like I do me solicitor and me accountant, I'd do as he tells me, wouldn't I? Have you ever thought about me? Oh, it could happen, you know. You could snuff it, just like that. Where would I be then? 200 quid worth of insurance and a flaming overdraft. Not to mention two thriving businesses. Don't tell me you've forgotten about them. Why do you keep greasing the stairs? Oh, oh. Hello, Ralph. How's the invalid? It's not so good. I'm all right. Oh, up to your tricks again, are you? I understand that you don't know when you're not well. I know when I've had enough. Oh, don't they all? Well, behave yourself from now on and do as you're told. Don't worry, I'll see he does. Oh, 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 did you hear that? Anyway, I'm going to the shops, love. I just wanted to know if you wanted anything. No, thanks. I can manage. How about you? Do you want some fags? I stopped smoking years ago. Oh, I thought you would have started again. Just let me catch him with a cigarette in his hand. I should get better before she kills you. Come on, <laughs> shall I tell you again? Up them stairs. Oh, uh... Don't you <laughs> encourage him, Elsie. He's daft enough. The doctor's told him he's got to have another week off work, and another week off work is what he's going to have. Yeah, I quite agree with you. Now, you, be your age. You know, I can see a point of view, love. You know, my second two were just like him. But the first one, if he's as much as cut his finger, he'd be off work for a week. Can I see some of... No. No, you can't. You heard what I said. I'm still waiting. Hey, can you get me a copy of this week's Beano? And the dandy. Shall I? Just for fun. Get what you want. I just want to keep him alive. We all do, love. Can I have them bomb cakes for half twelve? Half twelve, right. I've got three tongue, haven't I? Yeah, three tongue, one am. Right. Oh, I'll pay for them well, I mean. OK. So. So? I hope you'll be favouring us with your custom. I all being well. Madame Langton's trying to back down, isn't she? Says she's got nowhere to go. But what about us? I mean, we've sold our house now. Were we supposed to finish up in gutter? It is awkward. No, there's no awkward about it. We've got a verbal agreement about that house, and as far as I'm concerned, it's over and done with. And if she starts coming, it, she'll have a fight on her hands. You know what all that was about, don't you? Aye. Yeah, you might well look like that. You're all the same, you miracle workers. Great at promising and rotten at delivering. Hey, well, I've less of that. I never made no promises to Deirdre Langton. All I said was I would do the best I could, and as far as I'm concerned, that's exactly what I have done. As far as you're concerned? Have you ever thought what impression you give with your nods and your winks and your pals in high places? The Deirdre Langtons of this world, you know, expect a damn sight more from them than you can ever give them. They don't know what's truth and what's hot air. Well, it isn't hot air. Of course it's hot air. What was she offered when it came to push? With a kid like Tracy, you know, you want to live on ground floor, not halfway up to the moon. I've cancelled all jobs for today so you can sleep with a clear conscience. Are you listening? I'm listening. Right. Well, I'm off now. I'll take an early dinner. I'll be back about 12 o'clock. All right. Hello, 8463. Uh, well, well, what do you want him for? No, I'm sorry, love. He's not taking out any work at the moment. No, it's just that he's not been too well and, uh, well, I'm very... Hello, Fairclough, are you? Yeah, what was it exactly? Oh, yes, I think I should be able to manage that. Yes, I think I can fit that in. What's the address? You're not going. Was that 23, did you say? All right, yeah, see you there, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Ta-da. Are you out of your mind? No, but I will be if I do any more malingering. Len, you're ill. I am not ill. I was ill, but I'm not ill anymore. I wish you'd get that into your head. Well, I agree, lovey. I mean... How does she expect you to sell her your house when you haven't even got a roof over your own head? I mean, and you were the little baby. It's not as if you're by yourself. Yeah, I wish Ida could see it like that. Oh, she's bound to love it. I told Elsie about it. She said I ought to watch her. Well, well, she knows better than I do. Come to think of it, 
She does look the sort can give you a bit of trouble. She's the same as all little women. It's us big ones that get on with folk. <laughs> I think you're right, Betty. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry. I shouldn't be bothering you in my troubles. It's just Oh, that... I know. It was the same when my Cyril went. I mean, you turn to anybody. As far as I'm concerned, lovey, you're very welcome. Hey, look at me. I only popped in to say how do. I end up eating you out of house alone. <laughs> hey, Betty. Yeah? Do you think I should take that flat? What, in Appleton Court? Yeah. Oh, please yourself, love. I mean, it's your life, isn't it? I mean, you've got to be so careful about the kiddies, haven't you? Yeah. Especially at that age. I mean, they're all over the place. If you take my advice, lovey, you'll stop where you are. You're not signed anything, are you? Oh, no. Well, then, she's not got a leg to stand on. You're the job centre, and we've got the vacancy. Surely it can't be all that difficult to find a general labourer. Yeah, somebody to do the heavy work, the uh, fetching and carrying. Well, it might not be for all that long. It's just my husband's been told to take it easy for a couple of weeks. Right. Well, what time? OK, there'll be somebody here. Thank you. Bye. Do you know, you'd think there were nobody unemployed to listen to them. Now, there's somebody be here between one and quarter past, so see that you're here to take them on. And if you must work, work in there. After a bit, somebody be thinking of the corner. It's only till tomorrow, you know, till I get me dole. I wish you'd stop asking. I mean, you know what Mrs. Walker's like. She won't even let her pals have dick. Yeah, well, that's because she hasn't got any pals. And why tell her any road? I'm not asking for the family jewels. You know, it's a marvellous world, Betty. Yeah. If I had a posh suit and spoke eating and arrow, I could walk into any bank and they'd be chucking money at me. Mm. But because I'm Eddie Yates, Walt Noble, no fixed abode, I can't get a flaming pint of bitter without a summit meeting. That's like you say, look, it's the way of the world. I tell you what, I'll let you have half, and that's all. Now, just think on. I'm treating you, it's not dick. I don't want your charity. Yourself. Oh, well, go on, there, yeah. But don't make a habit of it, eh? <laughs> oh, you're a little dairy. Hey, hello. God bless you. And a very happy new year to and you. And you, lovely. Oh, hello, Mrs. Walker. Now, let's see, that was... Yeah. It's usual for customers to buy drinks for themselves. Yes, it is, Mrs. Walker. But, uh, well, I'm a very unusual fella. How true. Good morning. Morning. And a nice one it is, too, isn't it? Well, a little on the cold side, and I hear that rain is forecast. Well, let us enjoy it while we can. Oh, that was a scintillating burst of conversation. Don't knock it. It was conversation. Isn't that right? Isn't what right? I was saying, as long as people are talking to each other, there is hope for the world. Oh, if you say so. And if you buy them, they'll have a gin and tonic. Gin and tonic, okay. please. You know, I don't think Elsie subscribes to your theory about people talking. I've not heard a word out for days. And you know why. I've been a bad girl. I go out with men old enough to be my great granddad. Old enough to go out with Elsie. He's 50. Cheek will get you nowhere. And that'll get you hiding into nothing, behaving like that. He'll tell you the same thing. No, I'm not going to knock a fellow for being 50 now, am I? On the other hand... On, on, on the other hand, um, what's going to happen when you still let an agent want to go to discos? And he just wants to curl up with a pleasant book by the fireside. So I'll still go to discos. He won't stop me as long as I'm having a good time. What are you going to do when he's past it? I mean, when he's really snuffing it, lying there in his deathbed and you still a young woman. I should be a rich young widow. He's loaded. You have a go. I'm losing. She's the one that's losing. Must be great having your face on all this money. <laughs> Fetch her in. Let's have a look at her. Who? Tracy, who do you think I mean? Oh, I thought you were talking about Queen for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's not with me at the moment, actually. I've let her go to it part for a couple of hours with young Janet Musgrove. Oh, she's a sensible kid. It gives me a break as well, which <laughs> yeah. I need. ta -da. Can I have a word with you? Well, I'm in a bit of a rush, actually. Yes, I'll bet you are. Look, Ivy, I'm... Sorry if you think I've let you down, but I'm not selling. Not with nowhere to go, I'm sorry. That's not what I've heard. Council have offered you a flat, haven't they? But it don't quite suit, does it? 
Doctor, do you mind? Yes, I flaming well do mind. On strength of what you told me in this very street, I went ahead, didn't I? I've sold my house now. I've given my word and I'm keeping it. So where am I going to go? And my husband and my son. Ivy, please, this isn't doing any good. Oh, yes, you'll take her side. You're all flaming safe. I've heard about this street. You can gang up as much as you like. You're going to hear from my solicitors, you are. You're hoping to get some more for it, aren't you? you got some other silly mug on go. I'll tell you what you are. You're a good son for you. Will you get off me? Get off me, please. You're all the flaming same. <laughs> <laughs> myself the same question. I answered it for myself and all. Well? I take it you're talking about Mythical Mick from the Labour Exchange. You're out of date. It's the job centre and there's no mythical about it. It's you that's out of date, Lou. What they say is going to happen nowadays and what happens are two different things. It's not easy whistling up fellas for this kind of work now, you know. They want 5,000 a year and a four-day week. You start mentioning hard graft to them, they start limping and disappearing into a cloud of dust. Do you mean nobody turned up? I mean nobody turned up. I didn't really expect them to anyway. Still, if it makes you happy, you're finding out fair enough. Well, we keep trying, Len. I'm not having you putting yourself in hospital. Look, just find me somebody. I mean, I'm not going to stand by and let me just look at me and watch me. Just find me somebody. Ray Langtons don't grow on trees, you know. That's all in the past. You can't go on blaming that girl or anyone or anything else. It's over and done with. It's happened. And you know what Omar Khayyam said? Nor all thy piety nor wit shall lure it back to cancel half a line. Is that the fellow who had the obman stall at market? <laughs> For once, I know what I'm talking about. For weeks after Ernest was killed, every thought began with, if only. Sooner or later, you begin to look forward to tomorrow again. You'll see. It's just that everything seems to be going wrong at once. I know. First of all, I, I can't get a flat, and then I get a flat, and it's not right, and then this happens. So oh, you're not doing yourself any good. What's going to happen tomorrow? But she's really got to me, that woman. I mean, what is she going to do, her and her family? I mean, what if she keeps her word? They've, they've got no word. Oh, I wish I knew what to say. All I know is, if I was in your position, I'd feel exactly the same, but I'd look forward. The one thing I've learned is that recriminations don't help one little bit. Concentrate on what's going to happen. Make it happen. And if it comes to the point, I've said it before and it still stands, there's plenty of room for you, Tracy, with me. Yeah, I know that, but I can understand it. Well, I'm bloody if I can, and even if I could, I wouldn't want to. You're always saying you, aren't you? Everybody else is always right, and I'm always wrong. Don't talk daft. I'm a talking daft when I tell you we've sold our house. Heaven knows what they'll say. And he's a big lad, he'll make tour you, he'll play Hamlet. Even. Really, Yek is like, he's a sensible man, same as I am. No, come on, love, be fair. I mean, that Langton girl, she's got a kid to look after, and no husband. Well, I'm worse off than her, aren't I? I've still got mine. Me glass is empty. Same again, please, love. OK, me love. Hey, up, boring you rigid, is he? Does he ever talk about anything else but motorbikes? Ah, there is no else except motorbikes. When he has a few bob in his pocket, he talks about cars. Mind you, that's not often. Buy that for your man, Brian. Hey, You heard what the young lady says, our Brian. The lad will pay, love. OK, me dear. Hey, I love. Thanks very much. I'm not saying she's got no problems, but everybody's got problems. It's like a chain letter, you've got to keep it going. Hey, the criminal, them things. Oh, shut up, Bert. That's just an example. I mean, look what happens when somebody backs down like she's doing. It could spread all around the district. And it's not just us. And even if it was just look at us. The back time somebody flaming did look at us and all. I fixed that loan for Baldwin, we've sold his house, and we've had removal people around for an estimate. Hey, say I snuffed it. No, say I snuffed it, you know what I mean? We'd have to draw our arms in them, wouldn't we? But you haven't snuffed it. But I could. You keep talking rubbish like that, you flaming well will. I think your mum and dad are having a row. Yeah. Hey, look at them. Over 3,000 quid. I'd want a car for that money. Yeah, but you're getting a lot of bike there. 
I'm already getting a lot of bike. In fact, I'm getting too much bike. I've had nothing but bike since we came in here. Now, would you mind shutting that thing and talking about something else? What? There are other topics of conversation, you know. Like what? What do you think about Susie going out with this old fella? What old fella? Hey, look at them leathers. Uh, <clears throat> pardon me for interrupting, but are you in the market for another drink? Because, I mean, you are taking up valuable bar space. It's not me. It's a lady show. I'm quite willing to have another drink, oh. Betty. Unfortunately, my boyfriend is what they call financially embarrassed. I thought it was only Eddie Yates. I bought him a drink earlier on. There you are. I thought you were telling me women never bought fellas drinks. Same again, Betty. I, I, I was only kidding. No, you weren't. I was. I must have was. What do you mean you never heard of it? I know lots of fag shops that sell fags in fives. You'd better go and find one then, cos I don't. And what's more, I never have. Have you ever heard of a shop selling fags in fives? Oh, I think I can remember my dad telling me about when they sold them in fives. I think they used to have machines that sold them in twos. But that's when we were all poverty stricken. Some of us still are poverty stricken. That's why I'm trying to buy fags in fives. Well, answer me this. Who am I going to sell to other half to? There's a lot of us, you know. Life's unfortunate round here. Well, you go and find one then, and I'll split back it between you. Oh, God, give us ten of what he has. Come on, give us your money. Sal. <laughs> there you are. Four, five. You're a gentleman, which is more than I can say for here. Oh, you rotten devil. He's a laddie. He's a corker, isn't he? <laughs> and this elf's not in, is he? You see, it's true, right? Do you think I could have a word? Yes, go on. Al! He's, he's on late this week, but he can't sleep in the afternoons. <laughs> what do you want? Oh, hello. Uh, dear, he wants a word. Yeah, it's, um, it's just, I was thinking, you know, when we went to see that flat and it was too high, well, I was just wondering if there was any chance of a ground floor one, and if there was, how long would I have to wait? Yeah, it's funny, as I was just talking to Irene about ten minutes ago. Uh, I've been back to the housing department, and uh, well, I might as well tell you the truth. It could be a long wait. I mean, it could be over six months, even. Oh. Close as you are. You see, they offer them to old people and the infirm first. I mean, I know you're worried about your kiddie, but they are very safe, those high-rise flats, you know. They've got good high balconies, safety windows. Oh, it's no use. I know how she feels. She'd never have a minute's peace, would you? I wouldn't. Well, anyway, there was something else he said. Uh, look, I, I don't want to pry her out, but, um, well, in view of your, uh, well, your, your, your marital circumstances, uh, you're going to have to get rid of your house sooner or later, aren't you? And, uh, well, it's that that's uh, between you at the moment. Well, you, you mean I'd be better off getting rid? Oh, I definitely. You see, you're not a, an urgent case at the moment. You've got a, a home of your own, you see. But get without, and then have to start considering getting you somewhere more to your liking. You couldn't be definite, though, could you? Oh, no, 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 I couldn't make any promises. Well, they're not making promises, like, but th that's just what he said, like. Uh, they do give a, a certain consideration to people who haven't got a home of their own, you see. Does that help at all? Oh, yeah, it does help. It's a bit drastic, though, isn't it? Evening. I was just passing. I thought I'd uh, come and make recompense for your kindness earlier, oh, you know. That's nice. Only I'm still skint. Oh. Any of my mates been in? Well, they never had a time like this, have they? No, no. It's very soon, I've very soon. Uh, do you want the other half? And then you can owe me for a pint. Would I be presuming? Yeah. But I'll live. <laughs> Evening. It's not half chilly out there, you know. Yes, it is, isn't it? Ah, there you are. You got out of the bathroom hey, at last. Uh, what do you have? Apart from a good hiding. No, thanks. I'm waiting for Paul. You know him with one foot in the grave. Oh, oh give up. I've washed my hands off it. Um, where, where's Gail? Out with Barry Sheen on the back of his motorbike. Sooner than me. Well, as long as she's wearing a crash helmet. <laughs> Hello there. Oh, hello. Good evening. Good evening. Would you like a drink? Oh, oh thanks very much, but I just got to me. Oh. Uh, two dry white wines, please. Certainly. You sit down, love. I'll bring them over. I see the elderly gentleman friends in. It's very nice, though, Miss. Sure is. I'm rather sorry for him. That girl definitely has the makings of another Elsie Turner. Uh, good evening, all. Good evening. Hi, Eddie. Has Len been in, do you know? I've not seen him. Mind you, I've only just Thank come you. in myself, you know. Oh. Oh. Usual, Mrs. Walker, please. And another half for the lad. Oh, that is very civil of you. Well, uh, it's nice to have friends. It's right, definitely, yeah. And you can't have too many. 
No, well, uh, nobody wants to know you when you're down. Oh, you are kind, Emily. She loves these. Hey, look, your Auntie Emily's bought you a nice sticky cake. I won't give it to her now. No, no, it'll keep. No, I'm just coming around to see you, as a matter of fact. Oh? Yeah, well, you know that offer you made about me and Tracy moving in with you. Is it still old? Of course it does. It wouldn't be for long, but it would get me through a difficult patch. Oh, I should be delighted, really. When do you want to come? Well, as soon as you'll have us. Oh, I'll start to get ready for you this minute. Oh, I am pleased. I'll make sure you'll both be very happy, and I know I will. You're looking very lovely tonight. Thank you, kind sir. Oh, it's not an idle compliment. I don't pay idle compliments. I never said you did. So, it's a Gatsby, hmm? Or would you prefer something quieter? No, the Gatsby's fine. Listen, shall we ask Ron Elsie to join us? Hmm. Well, I don't mind if you don't. Excuse me, we're uh, going to the Gatsby's tonight. We wondered if you'd like to join us. Oh, sounds like a good idea. No, thank you. Not for me. It's a bit too crowded. Oh, well, see ya. Yes, sir. <laughs> Enjoy yourself. See. I thought you said you wanted to go out tonight. Not with them. That was a lovely overcoat he had on. Very expensive. You know, it's not fair. I mean, there's a middle-aged bloke with all the money in the world pulling all the birds in sight, and here's me with nothing. I'm sure he has worked for all he's got. So was I given a chance. Sup up. Hey? I said sup up. I'm giving you your chance. I... Again, are we? Well, this is where it stops. Meet Superman. Hi. You what? Him, my new labourer? I'm not that flaming desperate. Come to think of it, neither am I. Hey, now, just hang on a minute. From what I hear, you're both desperate. You foot muscle and you foot money. Then, come on. Tell him what it's all about. Well, it's umping mostly till I get back on my feet. How does 35 quid a week sound? Yeah, great. Right. Tomorrow morning, half past eight, here. We're taking an old fireplace out. It's a deal. Hey! You heard. I must want my head feeling. Letting you talk me into taking Eddie Yates on. Oh, we're not going through all that bit again, are we? Just get it into your head, Len. You can't do it all yourself. I'm not exactly in a wheelchair, you know. No, but you will be if you don't use some sense. The doctor said you'd to ease up, and that means you need a mate. I know I do. I need Ray back. Oh, if only he hadn't packed his bags. Well, he did, so it's no use if and butting. I know, but Eddie Yates. I mean, I've heard of scraping the barrel, but Eddie Yates. Why don't you wait and see how he shapes? I've seen how he shapes. I've seen how he shapes with Stan Ogden. There's very few fellas can make Stan Ogden look dynamic, but Eddie Yates is one of them. I still think he's not as useless as people make out. There's a side to him you don't see. I know there is. His backside, and the reason you can't see that is because he's always sitting on it. Well, I still say give him a chance. Keep him on his toes, let him do the heavy work, and take a load off you. Don't worry, I'll keep him on his toes, all right. He'll graft, believe me. Because if he don't, he's going to be out in his ear. That is, of course, if he turns up in the first place. Oh, uh, hello, boss. Here I am, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. How the hell did you get in? Well, uh, all skills die hard, you know. Every job has a few wrinkles, you know. You can forget those flaming tricks straight away. I don't want anyone messing with my locks. Well, I thought there's no point in hanging about outside. I mean, uh, I am a workman here, 
I don't know. That's what we're going to find out, isn't it? Whether you're a workman or not. Oh, don't you worry. You watch your turn over double. What with my enterprise and bright ideas. Let's just get one thing straight, shall we? I don't want any enterprise, any bright ideas. I just want to find out if you're capable of working an eight-hour day. Oh, you've got me all wrong, mate. I'm very glad to hear it. I suppose I shouldn't call you, mate, now. I suppose I ought to call you boss now. You can call me what the hell you like as long as we get going. We've got a job in Hardman Street today. Oh, great, eh? There's a great chippy there. Best of my road. Be all right for dinner. Will you forget your flaming belly till dinner time? We're taking out an old fireplace and putting a gas fire in. Do you know anything about putting gas fires in? Well, I know which is the right way up. Right, come on. Uh, 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 that's what I'm here for, to take the load off you. Leads on, Matt Duff. Ah, the act you've gone to town and this, haven't you? Not that I'm grumbling. <laughs> oh, well, I'm shopping for three now, or perhaps I ought to say two and a half. Tracy and Deirdre, you see. Oh, it's today, is it, when Deirdre moves in with you? Yes, today is the day. Ron's helping her putting her things into store. It's all very exciting. I'm all at sixes and sevens with it. Ah, you're late for work and all, aren't you? Oh, I'm not going in today. I'm taking the day off. Of course, I, I gave Mr Dawson plenty of warning so he could make arrangements to cope. It'll cost you a day's wages, I reckon. Yes, I suppose it will. Actually, Gail said I ought to phone up from home and pretend to be ill and then I'd not lose my wages. Of course, she was joking. I bet she wasn't. <laughs> well, I think you deserve a medal, Emily, for taking her and Deirdre in like that. Not so many people would put themselves out the way you have done, you know. Oh, I'm not putting myself out at all. I'm glad to be having them. All the same, you're taking a lot on yourself. Anyway, don't worry. I shall get onto the housing department and make sure she gets a flat as soon as possible. Oh, it won't worry me if they can't, Alf. Deirdre and Tracy are welcome to stay as long as they like. But I better not stand here talking, I suppose. I'll take this for Tracy. Will you put it on the bill, please? <laughs> Ta-da! Bye. You fancy losing a day's wage. Of course, it's the kiddie that's done it, that's what it oh, is. Oh, yeah, she's very fond of Tracy. She's more than a bit fond, if you ask me. Yeah. She's never had any kiddies of her own, you see. A woman of her age, on her own. She's got to have someone to love. Hey, you hope you've been reading my women's magazines again, haven't you? No, but it's right what I say. Frustrated maternal instinct. She's got to have a substitute child. What about me? Hey? What about my maternal instincts? Now, you can put all your bits and pieces in for that, and you'll need every bit of newspaper you've got. Oh, yeah. You see, that way, if, you know, you'll have cleared the decks with the little pieces, Frank and I can take out the heavy stuff and not damage the family here. Okay, I'll get started then. Hey, it's a depressing business, you know, pulling up roots. Oh, you know it is, Ron. I mean, I was up here for a while anyway. I understand how you must feel. You know, when me and Ray were... Well, you know, when things went wrong... I just couldn't stand the sight of these four walls. Anyway, actually, moving from here isn't really bothering me. Are you sure? Yeah, because I mean, it's not really the best of places to bring up a kid, is it? I'm not knocking the neighbours, they're great, but... She's only got the backyard to play in. Oh, just the same, Councillor Roberts said he'd get you a better council house eventually, that is. Yeah, that's what he said. Oh, I believe Alf Roberts will do his best for you, but there's no harm to keep pushing him just the same. Yeah, oh, don't worry, I'll do that. I don't intend being Emily's lodger for the rest of my life. You know, I hardly think of you as Emily's lodger. The way I see it, you and Tracy will have an extra mum. And you could do with being mothered a bit. Yeah, I suppose I could. Yeah, remember I said mothered, not smothered. The van's uh, here. Oh. Don't worry, darling. Everything's under control. Where's Tracy? She's playing at yard. Oh, will she be warm enough out there? It's quite chilly. Perhaps I ought to take her next door. Now, Emily, she's well wrapped up. She's getting some fresh air and she's not under anybody's feet. Yes. Oh, well, I expect you know best. It's all ready for you, so you can get stuck in right off. You remember about the chimney, did you, love? Oh, yes, it was swept yesterday. Electric, you're wearing all, so you'll not get any soot. Oh, there's bound to be a bit, you know, even though it's been swept. You'll not make the house a tip, will you? <laughs> you're about to get a bit of a mess. You can set your mind at rest there, love. You're not dealing with one of them cowboy outfits. I know blokes in this game that would tear your entire wall down. I don't want any trouble with her on to the side. She loves a bit of bother. No, ain't you? You see, with our methods, you get no complications. Oh. Very glad to hear it. Mr... Uh... Eddie. No, no, the boss there's Mr. No, I'm just Eddie. No, we have this method, you see, which uh, cleans and compresses any dust. You know the electricity board offices in Wellington Street? 
Well, when they went over to Gas Centre Leasing, who do you think they got to rip out their fireplaces? Oh, it must be all right then, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's only one snag. You see, uh, we have to breathe in a lot of dust and it makes you very dry, you know. Fancy a brew? Oh, great, yeah. I'll put kettle on. Tell love. What a nice woman. Yeah, you know, all that funny you give her. Consumer relations, innit? When the electricity board goes over to gas central eating. Yeah, well, he might as well. I mean, stranger things have happened, as the actress said to the bishop. <laughs> uh, come on, then. Let's get cracking. You can't talk fireplaces out, you know. Yeah, pity that, innit? <laughs> Thanks. You know, I've been thinking, Deirdre. Don't put all your ornaments into store. Bring some of them next door. You ought to have some of your own things around you. I mean, it's going to be your house as well as mine. Yeah, well, I, I might bring a couple oh. of things from my bedroom, but it's not really worth it, is it? Well, I think it's important to have your treasures around you. Yes, but it's only going to be for a short time, isn't it? Mmm. Mm. Oh, that's a nice cup of tea. You know, Frank, I wouldn't mind being a lodger in her place myself. <laughs> oh, Deirdre's not going to be a lodger. She's sharing a home. It's still a lodger, though, isn't it? Do you know, somebody should think up a posher word for it. <laughs> hi ho, hi ho, we're always on the go. With a hammer all day and the flaming day. Hi ho, hi ho, hi ho, hi ho. Hi ho, we're always on the go. With a hammer in your hand. The next door's fireplace if you go on like that. Sorry, got carried away a bit, you know how it is. Enjoying your work, are you? Do you know I am? I've always liked bashing things, knocking things down and that. Do you know what I'd really like to do for a living? Blow up mill chimneys. Do you know what? You should have a course for that at night school. Hi-ho! Hi-ho! Hey, hey, hey. Oh, Sam. Hey. Hi-ho! It's Valentine's Day soon, isn't it? You'll be lucky. Oh, I don't know. What do you reckon, Brian? Well... It could be the old feed pipe that needs sign out, I think. But I've got a feeling it might be the O-ring seals. Will you stop looking at that a minute. I'm talking about Valentine cards. Who wants to get a Valentine card anyway? I mean, they're for kids or middle-aged couples. I'm not sending Paul one. I don't want him to send me one either. Well, he's a middle-aged couple on his own, isn't he? Mm. He is mature and sophisticated, oh. which is more than you can say for somebody around here. Hey, I wouldn't mind one of these electronic ignition systems. It's supposed to give you better performance and everything. Oh, come here. Hey, I'm reading that. No, you're not. You're talking to me. Well, what about? Some are interesting. Brian is more interested in actions more than words, aren't you, Brian? I mean, you look a bit like an action man. Bionic. Oh, yeah. I said talk to me, not her. Anyway, she's only interested in older men. Where are we going tonight? Well, we could go to pictures if you like. There's a Clint Eastwood film, aren't there, Roxy? Honest, you two are dead square. Why do you make different? There's a smashing place in Alderley Edge where me and Paul go. Good food, good dancing. Yeah, I bet it costs a bomb, though. Paul can afford it. We'll go for the pictures. OK. By the time I got back to work now, I'll see you tonight, then. About six. Yeah, all right. Sorry. <laughs> Let's have to speak to that young man. Brian, what's he been up to? Well, it's not his behaviour as such that I object to, though I have just seen a certain amount of canoodling going on in the snug. Oh, yeah. Good job Albert Tatlock's not here today. He goes mad when he sees Gail and Brown sitting where he sits. It's easy to think he owns them chairs in there. And if there's any hand-holding, well, according to him, I mean, it's Sodom and Gomorrah. Still, I mean, he's a bit straight-laced, isn't he? I'm no Puritan. Oh, I didn't mean to say you were, Mrs Walker. Although, in this day and age, if one retains certain standards, one is accused of being narrow-minded. Yeah. There is a difference. Oh, there is. <laughs> what was I saying? Um, oh, yes, Brian. He will have to get rid of those overalls before he comes in here. Well, they were clean. Yes, for once. We'll have to be very careful, Mrs. Walker. His mother's got very sharp ears. She can pick up a whisper at 30 paces, the right. Hey, Yates! Eddie! Eddie, come here, will you? Are you shouting of Eddie? No, I'm singing an old Johnson medley. Get him out of here, will you? He's not at the house. Well, where is he, then? I couldn't say for definite, but last I saw you were talking to her next door but one, Mrs Goodall. 
flighty piece she is. Now, I'm not one to call people, but I reckon that's where Eddie is, her house. And as for what they... I'll leave it. Damien Yates. A man unknown. <laughs> You're not wrong there, love. And I'm not interested in anything that's been dropped off floor. Hey, up your mate's back. Looks pleased with himself as well. What the hell do you think you're on? It's up, boss. I'll tell you what, up. I've been humping this flaming fire while you've been amusing bored housewives. I've not been amusing myself, boss. I didn't take you on to chat up birds, you know. I have been chatting up a lady. I'll grant you that. A Mrs. Goodall by name. Well known she is round here. Anyway, what have I been chatting her up about? Gas fires, supply and fitting off save. That's what I've been chatting her up about. You're supposed to be here helping me. And she's ordered one from us, hasn't she? To wit, rip out the old fireplace, put in brand new gas appliance. Straight up. Straight up, along with five one of the Queen's Realm, as guarantee of our speedy and best attention. She said if that old... Ca she said if uh, Mrs Todd can have a new gas fire fitted, so can she. Trust her to copy out, I do. Well, I had mine first, so what she says... What well, can't speak, can't lie. Uh, yours will be best, love. Uh, any chance of another brew? I suppose so. Well, boss, did I do well or did I do well? You know, my missus might be right. You're not as deft as you look, eh? Now, come on, before I do myself a mischief. And if I do, my missus will do you a mischief. Right. Still holding up? How's it going, then? Don't worry, Ivy. I'm not going to change my mind and move everything back in again. No, I never thought you were. I just popped across to see how you were feeling. You know, I mean, after we had that round the other day, I hope there's no hard feelings. No. I must admit, I was pretty upset at the time, though. Yeah, well, I'm sorry about that, but, I mean, I were worried. I mean, what would be in it in the middle? I mean, our house being spoken for and everything. I mean, look at it my way. I did look at it your way. That's why I'm moving out. Anyway, I'm giving the keys to the solicitor tonight so that it's between you and him when you move in. Right. Hey, there's not much wear on this carpet, is there? How oh, a lounge suite will look smashing on that. Hey, and these curtains should go lovely with it and all. Right, like I said, I'll let you get on. Oh, well, uh, you're not going to take it light bulbs, will you? I hadn't really thought about light bulbs, actually, I No, I knew you wouldn't. I said to Bert, I said she'll not take light bulbs, she's not that sort. Some folk do, you know. Well, I'll let you get on. Oh, erm... Um, Will you leave me telephone book as well, love? You won't forget to leave the soap on the side of the bath, not to speak of the water and the pipes, now, will you? You look a bit weary, love. Have you had a hard day? They're all hard days if you work for Mike Baldwin. I tell you, if anybody in his employ stands about for more than two seconds, he gets all twitchy. They're all saying, these small firms. When boss is paying money out himself, you know, he feels every penny. You want to work for one of these big corporations? Pennies from heaven, then, you know. Oh, take your word for it. Now, sell us something nice for me tea. Take your pick. Well, I want something nice and easy, you know. No peeling or scraping. Something nice and tasty, filling and cheap. Mm, don't we all? With the exception of my husband. Oh, and what's so different about him? Well, he's very awkward, you see. Hey, I can hear you, you know. It's true. He won't have convenience foods. Yeah, well, that's all the hit for, isn't it? Flushing down a convenience. <laughs> <laughs> so here's me, struggling with potatoes, cos he'll not have packet. And then when he wants a pie, which is about five times a week, I'm struggling with stewing steak, cos he'll not let me open a tin. Yeah, well, he'll put washing up, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for that little glimpse into domestic life. But what am I going to have for me to eat? Ah, here comes an interested party. We'll ask her. What do you want for your tea? Anything. Marvellous. Well, I'm late. Brian's picking me up in half an hour, so I'm pushing in as well. These are one size tight. Yes, so... look, 40p. Mm. That's another thing he doesn't approve of. I like stockings myself. You won't if you have to wear them. How do you know I don't? It's a change for you coming in here, buying tights. You're usually rifling through my dressing table drawer, pinching them. Well, I haven't this time. I might have done, only Susie beat me to your last pair. I'll swing for them one of these days. The pair of them, I swear I will. Hi. They yeah, are. Mrs. F, I brought him back safe and sound. Hey, hello, love. How are you feeling? Fine. 
Well, why shouldn't I? I'm not a flipping invalid. Oh, don't get so touchy. You'd be flipping touchy if you had him around all the time. Can I carry that for you, Mr. Fairclough? Can I help you, Mr. Fairclough? You've been treating me like an old woman all day. I told you I'd look after him, Mrs. F. And how's he gone on? Be great, didn't I, boss? Hang on. I want to hear it from organ grinder, not monkey. He's not done too bad. Typical British understatement, that is. I did terrific. Let's have a few details. Well, he was there on time. In fact, he was there before time. When I got to the yard, he was already there. You haven't left it open all night, are you? No, no. One of his main attributes is getting into places. But he behaved himself, and he did his share of the donkey work. He even got us another gas fire instalment in the same street. Great, eh? Yeah, so I think he's earned his shilling. Hey, I told you he could do it if he wanted. Ta, Mrs. F. Do you know there's a lot round here that underestimate me? I believe when something needs praising, I believe in speaking up. Thank you. Like the smell of that cooking. Especially when you've had a day working your socks off. Hey, Tater Ash, my favourite. Well, that is amazing. What a coincidence. Do you know that's my favourite and all? Yeah, well, I, uh, better be getting off for me tea. Let me see, Wednesday. That's, uh, beans on toast if she hasn't already burnt the beans. Same time tomorrow, is it, boss? Same time tomorrow. Hey, and think on. I open the yard gate with a key. Your every wish is my command. Well, uh, I better get going then, uh, let you get on with your tea, you know. Would you like a plateful, Eddie? Oh, that is very kind of you. And I wouldn't say no. You haven't seen Brian, have you? What's up? Have you lost him? Oh, we're going out tonight. You were supposed to pick me up half an hour ago. Last time I saw him with his dinner. We've been round to our house. I've just come from there. Listen, he's got no sense of time, my Brian. Takes after his father here. Thank you very much. Well, don't look so worried, love. He'll not be far away. If I sit down and have a drink with us, what do you want? Well, I'll have a lager, please, Mr. Tilson. Same again, love. Yes, please. Two lagers, half a bit of love for us. Okay. <laughs> Did you get Deirdre stuff all safely into store then? All safely stored away? Yeah, I expect she'll be feeling a bit depressed, you know, leaving her own home. Oh, I think she's doing the best thing myself. I mean, she's got a built in babysitter in Emily. She'll have to get out and about, have a bit of fun. Oh, you don't understand. It's not the same. When you've had your own home, your own kitchen and all that, it's like, it's like your own little empire. She'll not enjoy living with Emily, I tell you. All she wants is a new job and a complete change, that's all. If I could do a bit of a change myself. You know, I was thinking of kicking the job into touch. Oh, you leave taxi driving? What would you do? I thought you'd like being your own boss. Well, maybe I've been fooling myself about thinking I was my own boss. Anybody with the price of the fare, that's my boss. And he's getting meaner with his tips. And he's taken a threatening to kick my teeth in more often than he used to. Yeah, but what would you do if you gave up taxi driving? That's the big question, isn't it? Yeah, but what would you do? It's not easy at your age. And what do you mean at my age? Oh, 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 sorry, that was Tackless Elsie speaking. I meant at our age. I'd have you know, Elsie, that you and I are at the prime of life. <laughs> the world is our oyster and no cracks out of you, young Susie. I never spoke. She said she'd be handing keys into the solicitor tonight, so I should get him in a day or two. First thing I'll do, I'll go around and give the house a good bottoming. I couldn't abide moving in on somebody else's dust. Hey, up here's our Brian now. Hiya, thought you'd be in here. Where have you been? You were supposed to pick me up an half an hour ago. Hey, you haven't even changed yet. Oh, I've not time. Been busy at garage. Well, you could have rung me. Anyway, come on, let's get going or else we're late for the pictures. I can, love. I've still got my bike strip down at garage. Oh, he's motorbike mad, our Brian. He always has been. Yeah, I've got an oily because the sun's red. I think it's the head gaskets. I don't care what it is. If you think I'm sitting around here waiting for you, you've got another thing coming. Well, we can go to the pictures. Get lost. Hey, Gormless, you've upset her now. Well, don't stand there like a lemon. Get after her. Hold on. If you don't want to go running after her now, listen, you'll only be making a rod for your own back if you do that. Yeah. <laughs> Half a bit of please. That's all awesome. Just a minute, Elizabeth. I'm sorry, young man, but you won't be served in here, not in that condition. Eh? I'm sorry, but it's your overalls. But I'm in the middle of a job at garage. I've only popped in for a minute. What's up, Brian? Well, the landlady won't serve me. You what? Now, just a minute, Ivy. Just you take it easy. Why won't you serve him? Because his hands are filthy, and so are his overalls. So what? It's a pub you're running, not Ritz Hotel. My other customers are entitled to expect certain standards when they come in here for a drink, especially in the evenings. Give over. Your other customers are working class folk. If they want to come in their overalls, it's up to them, isn't it? Forget it, ma'am. I don't really want to drink anyway. Yes, you do. All these airs and graces. It's only a top me eight me pub, is this? You want to be thankful you've got good customers like our Brian in here. 
I am afraid I am not accustomed to being harangued like this on my own premises. Well, you better start getting used to it then, and if you're going to start picking on our Brian, because we're moving in next door but two to you, so we'll be neighbours. And we'll want treating like neighbours and all. Waiting for you, Tracy, next door in your new home. Oh, I'll carry these round for you. Oh, your back's a lot more modern than mine. It's going to be quite a boon. I've been going to get a new one. Is there anything else still to be done? No, that's it. Oh, anything you want me to do? No, I, I don't think so, love. I'll be around in a couple of minutes. Oh, well, I'll go and put the tea out then. Come on then, Tracy. We don't live here anymore. Are you up yet, Bert? Bert! You know we've got a lot to do this morning. I want to get straight up upstairs for a start, and then I want to go look at that bed at Farrow's for our Brian. That one he's got on its last legs, it looks a right sight. Bert, if you don't get out that bed. I am out of it. And about time and all. You've not got your slippers on again, have you? Do you know I haven't found them yet? Well, last time I saw them, they were in the bathroom. Of course, you won't have been in there yet, will you? No, because I'll tell you why our Brian's in there, isn't he, like he always is? Do you know what? It takes him ten minutes to comb his hair. Ten minutes. Nobody in the world takes ten minutes to comb their hair. Not even Veronica Lake in a peekaboo days took ten minutes. And certainly not you. You know, Bert, I think you could start shaving in the morning, couldn't you? I mean, a new house, new way of doing things. I've shaved me at night all my life, so I'm not starting now, so don't start. Hey, just a minute. Where's the milkman? It's there, under your nose. Do you know, I must be going blind, I can't see it. It's in the jug, where it should be. Ivy, can I ask you something? What? Are we going to be comfortable in this house, or is it going to be like living in a, in a flaming stately home? It's going to be different, I'll tell you that, Bird. Look, just doing things nice like pouring milk in a jug doesn't mean we're going to be living on pens, does it? Don't it just... I didn't know Queen was coming for breakfast, ma'am. Oh, Brian, don't you start. Look, we can have things nice, can't we? Yeah, of course we Like can. other folk do. Absolutely. So we're going to do it from now on. Great. You haven't put no cups out. Hmm? I said you haven't put any cups out. You know, them things you drink out of. Like these, you know, cups. Oh, sorry. What's up with you this morning? Nothing. Oh, you could have fooled me. Elsie. Hmm? Am I more important than a motorbike? Come again? Oh, I see. That motorbike. Mm. Known affectionately as the Bonnie. And I do mean affectionately. Like he's in love with a thing. How can you be in love with a rotten, dirty, great hunk of machinery? How can you? Oh, tell your auntie all about it, Chuck. Well, he was supposed to meet me last night, wasn't he? Only he forgets, don't he? On account of his fiddling with that rotten motorbike. He's always fiddling with his rotten motorbike. Well, think yourself lucky it's only the motorbike. Oh, thanks. That's a lot of help. Do you know, you ought to be running an agony column. But do you mind if I just ask you one more question? Hurry on. Am I more important than a motorbike? Yes, if he thinks about it. Does he need thinking about? Well, you see, when he's thinking about his motorbike, Chuck, he's not thinking about you and vice versa, if you see what I mean. I mean, there'll come a time when he's chewing on your ear hole and he'll think he'll be thinking about his clutch pedal or whatever. Well, it is more important than... No, only as far as his interest in life goes. You see, his fella's interest. And that's one of the umpteenth ways they're different from us. He's got more interest in his interest than he has in a woman. Now, it's not the same with a woman. For them, it's the fella. He's the most important, if you see what I mean. And it causes a load of heartbreak for us. Wouldn't it be a lot easier if we were all more alike? Oh, yes, it would, Chuck, but not half as interesting. Yeah. I've got to be off, Chuck. See you. Yeah. <sighs> oh, it's the night owl. Just rolled in, have you? Oh, yeah. I often go out dressed like this. But I get arrested a lot, though. You weren't in at two o'clock because I looked at the time. 
Half past, actually. Yeah, and it shows. You don't look so good yourself, and you've had your beauty. Now, watch it, madam. Just watch it. Well, leave off me. Leave me alone. It wasn't that late. It was that late. And it was that late the night before and the night before that. I don't know what sort of people you're going out with, but they certainly aren't very fond of their own. Lucky she didn't land you one, then. Or again, she won't. She's right, you do look terrible. I'll get over it. Were you drunk last night as well as late? I had a few drinks, yeah. More than a few. Oh, will you stop nagging? I've got a headache. Well, you think you're that clever going out with a fast lot? Old men, fat wallets, and fatter tummies. Well, it's a big improvement on playing. He lost me, loves me not with Grotty Brian. What is it today? Then? Oh, shut up! And you. Oh, hello. Settled in, have you? No, well, of course you won't have, will you? Not yet. Takes time to settle into a new house. They're a bit like corsets for that. <laughs> oh, you're like me, aren't you? How's that, Hilda? House proud. Oh, I can tell. Elba grease you're using on them windows. In this weather and all. Ah, oh, well, I do like clean windows, Hilda. There's no worse than a dirty window. Makes all house look tatty. Yeah, well, you know how to make sure that never happens, don't you? Yeah, clean them. No, let my stand clean them. 50p the house he charges. It's the cheapest window cleaner around here by mile. No, thanks, Hilda. Well, Deirdre Langton had him. In fact, nearly everybody does round here. Ah, well, perhaps they've got more faith in him than I have. Look, us workers are supposed to help each other out, you know, else where'd we be? Well, I'll tell you where I'd be in this case, Hilda. I'd have dirty windows. And I'm sure even Tony Ben wouldn't want me to have that. In aid of. Oh, let's just say I'm a belated Father Christmas, and one of these is for you, if it fits. Where shall I put them? Oh, put them on the settee. Right. Oh, Paul, they're fantastic. They're yeah, not bad. They're the quality end of our range. Do you know, I bet they cost a fortune. Yeah, well, choose one, and it's yours. Where well, I'll come. No, oh, just put it down to my um, princely generosity. Oh, it's the first I've ever heard of it. Hmm? No, that's not true. You're very generous. Thank you. Now I'll tell you the truth. Now that will be something new. Well, actually, these are models. They're a bit yesterday-ish, but only just. So they'll be sold off cheap to the staff. So I said to myself, why not let the lovely Susie have the first choice? And that's exactly what you've got. Oh, but they're all smashing. There is one condition. What's that? That you wear it tonight when you come out with me. Oh, no. I've been out every night this week. I'm not just jaded. I'm dead on my feet. What's the matter with the younger generation? If I can stand the pace, surely you can. Not getting enough orange juice or something? And if I don't come, no dress? Uh, no. You can twist me around your little finger, can't you? I've had a lot of experience. I'll try this one on first. That's my favourite. I am still going to try them all on, even if this one looks fantastic on me. So don't go away. Well, I'm here for the morning, if that's all right. Oh, yeah, I've got the house to myself. you better take your coat off. You're looking very svelte today, Lynch. For a Monday? Yes, I am, Mum. Ken thought so too, didn't you, Ken? Did I? Well, weren't it you what said you thought I'd like the winning entry from the Southport Flower Show? Nah, that, that'd be Joe Hargreaves, him that grows the prized cauliflowers. Do you have to bring him in here with you? Couldn't you leave him in his kennel? Yeah, good old bet. I admire her. I really do. Well, what brought all that on? Didn't you know he's been in love with her for years? Was that before you were in love with her? Who told you that? Didn't you know? I had a private detective check up on you before I said I'd marry you. By Ecky and his brass. Oh, I don't know. From what I learned, it was money for old rope. You know, what I was saying about Beth, it can't be easy making that sort of effort with yourself on a day like today in deepest Lancashire. I mean, what for? What's the point? I don't know about you, but the temptation for me is to walk around unwashed and unkempt to match the wintry weather. He does that in July. No, I used to do that in July when I was single. Now, isn't that a coincidence? Oh, is it? That is the very subject Beth and I were discussing this morning, standards. Or rather, the lack of them, especially among the working classes. Uh, Mr Walker? Yes, Ken. I don't think you might be confusing a healthy reluctance to accept everything as the will of God or the CBI with a lowering of standards? I'm not confused at all. You're not saying, are you, that God and the CBI don't know better than the working classes? 
course they do. <laughs> Mind you, I do agree with what you were saying about Bet, about her squaring her shoulders and her falling arches. <laughs> Although sometimes the effect isn't quite what she hopes for. Shouldn't you be serving snacks at full meal prices? Well, lunchtime while she's over, so I just popped out for a couple of seconds. Susie hasn't been in here by any chance, has she? No, he hasn't. Since when Susie been here? He... You're not after Susie. Not the way your eyes swivel round this place like a searchlight. Brian hasn't been in. Have you had a lover's tiff then? No, we haven't. Yes, we have. Oh, I might have known you being here sooner or later. How are the dogs, is it? Um, Can't she be bitchy? No, it is not a hair of the dog. I feel quite merry and bright this morning, and who wouldn't have the morning I've had? No, I saw you come in, so I thought, I know, I'll just go in and help and make it up with Brian. <coughs> I don't need your help. Well, you need somebody's way of forever falling out, Ian. Uh, look, I know it's cold outside, but Mrs Walker does like folk what come in here to buy some, and it does help to pay my wages. I'll have a large of Not for me, thank you, Bet. I don't need drink to keep me going. How do you two manage to keep living together? Oh, go on, kid. Have a drink, eh? And cheer up. No. Oh, well, suit yourself. I can't. Me breath at smell and Emily don't like it. Anyway, what's been happening to you this morning that's so special? Paul called, that's all. Oh, him. And he brought me a dress to wear tonight. A very expensive dress. You're not going out again tonight. Where? Oh, here, there and everywhere. We'll probably end up at the Gatsby. Susie, you're asking for trouble, you know. He's twice your age and he's only after one thing. Aren't they all? Even your precious Brian. At least I'm getting something out of it, like a good time once in a while. You know, you should try having one. At least then you could criticise. And you never know, you might enjoy it. Mightn't she, Bet? She might. Well, it's better than keep mooning over Brian, who seems to prefer his motorbike any road. Aren't fellas pigs, eh? All we want from them is constancy and affection. Yet, really, they prefer football. Yeah, so my motto is get out of them what you can, while you can. Like you should be doing. <laughs> sell at cut price anyway. I mean, why can't they charge proper price in first place? I mean, especially on something as essential as a bed. Well, it's a sales gimmick, isn't it? You know what I mean? To make you think you're getting a bargain. Well, I don't want the gimmicks. I'm not a kid. I want to be told fair price and then I'll pay that happily. You will never do away with gimmicks until you have a truly socialist society. But how many of your brothers and sisters really want that, eh? Go on then, answer me that. Bert, don't start on politics. You always say that when I get you in a corner. Come in. Oh, Mr. Tatlock. I, I was just passing and thought I'd been able to say I'll do, but well, I see you're having your tea, so I... No, no, we've nearly finished. Would you like a cup? Oh, I wouldn't say no. Oh, well, uh, sit yourself down, then. Well, do you think you'll like it round here? Well, it's not that much different to where we were, you know what I mean? Only chalk and cheese. Well, as far as house is concerned, any road. Well, the folks don't change much, so do they? Do you know, it's a funny thing. I was just saying that myself. Creators a lot of blue bottomed on your humming bees, aren't they? Eh? Oh, very true, yeah. Yeah, we got the right lot round here and all. Not right? Yeah. Hey, no gossiping, Mr. Tatlock. You leave him alone. If he wants to speak his mind, let him. Yes, sugar. I just one. That take her at corner shop. She's skin a flea. And that husband of hers, a great big fat tub of butter. The only reason they wed each other when nobody else would have them. Oh, that right. And take that lot next door. We eat Ogden's? Ah, the puddle. Especially her. Mine lends her clothes all right. Although he's changed a bit since he got wed. You know, if you ask me, she were looking for a safe billet. At her age. Oh, you know. if Rita Fairclough could ever hear you. And then that Elsie Tanner, she, she's just living on past glories. The one you want to look out for is Annie Walker. Yeah. Good glass on the outside. Wrong glass inside. Listen, that's the only true thing you've said since you're coming. I'm not joking. You're worse than any woman you are. You see if I'm not just right. <laughs> what is the name of the alphabet? You is, uh, is that on Yeah, it's baked today. Madeira, isn't it? Yeah, Madeira. Mm. Long time since I had a bit of homemade Madeira cake. Which cake or promontory was known to the Greeks... Mr Tatlock, what? have you ever thought what folks say about you? Oh, I reckon they think I'm a bit of a character. Mine, I find it pays. All right. 
There's some sausage and mash in the oven. It's one of them days, you know, behind with everything. Oh, I know, hasn't picked up since this morning. Not really, no. Have you heard from... Uh... No, I haven't. Oh, he's just playing hard to get. You'll hear from him. I don't care whether I do or I don't. You know, Summer, you're a dreadful liar, you are. It's right, Elsie. For all I care, he can ride round on that rotten motorbike on ever-decreasing circles. <laughs> so you say. Well, what do you think? Isn't it a knockout? It's all right if you like that sort of thing. I do, and so do you. Why else are your eyes on stalks? Have you come into a fortune or something? That must have cost him. Didn't you know? A sugar daddy bought it her. No, I did not know. Frightened of telling her, were you? No, I wasn't. I wanted to surprise her. Well, Elsie? It's very nice. Nice? It's fantastic, especially on me. And you know it. You both know it. Is this a mannequin parade, then, just for our benefit? No, it's not. She's going out again tonight with him. Part of the price I had to pay, won't it, for the dress? I hope you know what you're doing, lady. I am doing exactly what you did when you were my age, according to you. And didn't you have a few good times? Yes, I did. One or two. And that's just what I'm doing. I'm not daft. I can look after myself. Can you? Yeah, I could look after you and all. Hey, come with us tonight, eh? Oh, go on, Elsie. Tell her it's daft sitting twiddling her thumbs, hoping Brian will condescend to call. Where's that going to get her? Elsie! Don't drag me into it. Well, you can't say I'm wrong, though, can you? I said don't drag me into it. Hello? Dale Potter speaking. Is that Paul for me? No. It's Ron for Elsie. I'm sorry, kid. I know. You know, the way you're going on, you'll be the only one without a fella. He'll ring or call or something. And pigs will fly. There you are, love. By the way, your girlfriend were in at dinner time looking for you. That's the only girlfriend I've got. <laughs> yeah. Did she say anything? Oh. Mrs. Walker, about last night. Didn't even speak to me. You shouldn't have come in, you know. I told you, young must have come in again, not so she apologised. What? Were we that buying? No way, ma'am. You know, Dad, you're not as mean as I say you are. Cheers. Cheers, Brian. Change. She thinks she's won, you know. That's what she thinks, but she's got another thing coming, I'll tell you. Yes, dear. I think it's a total victory. He's quite presentably dressed tonight. Just shows you the importance of being firm with these people straight from the start, especially her sort. You're right, Mrs. Walker, as always. I do have rather a good track record, don't I? Yeah. Hey, I've just been round to your house, see if you wanted anything, you know. Such as? Well, you name it, I can get it. You know, uh, wallpaper, paint, lino, anything like that, furniture. Dead cheap, ridiculous prices. Hey, we could do with a roll of lino over there, couldn't we? Could we? Say no more. It's here, uh, in the order book. Oh. Hey, of course we could. Hey, did I talk like shout about him? Not much. But next time he shakes hands with you, be sure you count your fingers after. <laughs> do you think we've done the right thing coming to live on the street? You seem a very funny lot, if you ask me. They are a funny lot. Ta. Ta. Here, Mrs. Oak. Where's Stanley tonight, then? Still sleeping on what he's up to dinner time. Yeah, it's terrible having a problem like that, isn't it? You're very pally, aren't you? Hey? With that lot? Oh, no, I'm just doing a bit of business, that's all. Oh, is that what you were doing dinner time? Because I've made some broth for you. Uh, well, I was invited to eat with uh, my new employer and his wife, you know. Hey, that Rita makes a lovely steak and kidney pudding, you know. Oh, does she? Well, I hope she makes you one for tomorrow and all, cos there'll be no point in coming to our house. Why is it women get so prickly, Bess? Well, it's because we're more sensible and sensitive than you fellas are, Eddie. I mean, how do you get any sense from a bucket? Ask a silly question. Thank you, kind sir. And thank you for purchasing our amazingly numerous public things. Did I have a choice? Not much. <laughs> I thought you were gone back home. I was putting my press away. Ain't hey, another thing, I fancy someone a bit more exciting tonight. Oh, this is as far as I'm allowed to go, you know, in my state of health. You look all right to me. All right. Thanks, Mrs. Walker. Could I interest you in a rag mag, sir? Oh, sorry, I've just asked you, haven't I? Well, look, I've just bought one. It had to be you, it had to be you, I wandered around, finally found somebody who could make me be true. 
How terrific you look tonight. About a million times, but don't let that stop you. What I can't understand is what you do with an old fellow like him. Mark, who's talking? Peter Pan himself. I prefer older men, they're more. They're more fun. Frank, I'm sorry about my friend not coming, but maybe next time, eh? Well, not to worry, there's more fish in the sea, you know. Only your bait's not what he used to do. <laughs> oh, I didn't do badly last night. Big and very bountiful. Go on. So, where is she tonight then? Oh, I chucked her back. Oh, yeah, I'm a brilliant dancer, too. Hang about. I've brought this dress tonight. Charming. Would you do me the honour of dancing with me, dress? If you think you're up to it. Cheeky devil. Good evening. Oh, hello. Everything OK? Oh, fine. As per. We do our best. The singer's not up to much. It's all I could get. The other lady's down with blue. Actually, I didn't think of giving Rita a thing. You don't need to do it. Yeah, but I don't think she would have done it. Len's not been very well. I am sorry for that. But I'll tell her you remember. Oh, I do. I do. With affection. Very nice. Yeah. Paul seems happy with her. For now. They're not all dirty. Eh? Hey. Jokes in here. Well, have you seen Mrs. Walker? Have a chat. You found her good in Mrs. Walker? I'm just censoring, dear. Have to be so careful what you sell in your premises, you know. Oh, indeed, yeah. Too fast, hypocrite. She's enjoying it. They offered to kidnap her, hoping we'd have a whip round for a ransom. But I told them nobody'd even miss her. <laughs> yes, Ronald. Uh, it's not me that actually wants you, love. Oh. <laughs> Two pints of bitter and a gin and tonic. Pardon? You is, you've not got cloth ears. You mean you're paying for them? Of course I am. I'm a man of substance now, you know. I am Mr Fairclough's right-hand man. Isn't that right, Mr Fairclough? Buys a pint and I'll say yes. Make that three pints of bitter and whatever Mrs Fairclough's having. Do you know something, Eddie? What? You're not a bum after all. You look like a very generous man. Well, I'm not buying you one, I don't even know you. I don't take drinks off strange men anyway, but you buy a rag mag, don't you? Go on. Only because I think you fancy me. <laughs> Sir? Madam? Are the jokes dirty? Well, one or two, aren't they? In that case, I'll take two. Is that why they put the dirty jokes in there? Just for the fellas' sake? Actually, some of our best customers are women. Oh! I like it. I like it. Would you pay a ransom for me if somebody kidnapped me? Yeah, as long as they weren't asking more than a quid. Oh, Mrs Walker? Thanks very much for letting us sell in your pub. It's not something I normally do, young man, but it's in a good cause. Well, thanks again. Hey, excuse me, have you got a minute, love? Don't tell me. You're so taken back by our rag mag, you want a water or gross to send to your friends. Well, we can supply the brown envelopes. <gasps> no, mind you, it's very good. But, um, I did hear you were looking for somebody to kidnap. Right. Any ideas? Yourself, for instance. Yeah, I've got the van outside, if you want it. Hey. Sorry. Uh, no. She's the one you want. Very popular lady. You'd get a lot of money for her. Am I right, Len? Oh, I a very popular lady is better. <laughs> Don't overdo it. <laughs> you know, I might have something there. You can wipe that leer off your face for a start. <laughs> you should stop doing that. <laughs> OK, baby, this is a snatch and you're the body. Oh. Hey, hang on a minute. You're students. You know, it's a stunt for Rag Week. You two were in pub last night, weren't you? Yeah, selling rag mags. We did smashing too, a record, in fact, for a little backstreet pub. Yeah, and we had this brilliant idea to kidnap you and ask for ransom from customers. Why me? Well, you're indispensable, aren't you? Well, you could. Yeah, you're a bigger attraction than the beer. Oh, that's very true. So, get in the car. Please. What? Just like that? Yeah, Josie will take you around to her mum's house for a day. Yeah, but what about all newspaper photographers? Not to mention the TV cameras. And I've not even had my hair done. But you're only being kidnapped. You're not entering for Miss World, you know. Lovey, you let me be the best judge of that. As I'm sure you know, all things are relative. Now, you hang about here for five minutes.
What do you think? Ah, what's five minutes in our young lives? You're an early bird. Yes, I am, aren't I? But unfortunately, I'm not stopping. Pardon? You've got a very fraught day, you know. Elizabeth's sick. Fred on some senior race course or other. Yes, well, I'm afraid I've got to slip to the vets. The vets? Yes. I found this little robin lying flat on its back in my backyard this morning. Oh, it does look poorly. All its legs are stiff. Did you know that the mortality rate's more than 50% amongst robins? No, I didn't. Well, it is. So if you can help just one as you pass along, I'll be about an hour. Oh, you managed to save it. Me too, Mrs. Walker. Me too. Right, you can drive me back home and we'll have a powwow. Morning, Hilda. I mean, at this time. I've just nipped home to change my shoes. These ones have suddenly started rubbing. That's your excuse. It's not an excuse. Go on, you were hoping Brian had written you a forgive me, forgive me letter. I doubt he can write that one. I nipped home to change my shoes. <sighs> hey, I had another terrific time last night, kid. Another terrific hangover by the look of it. It was worth it. You should have come with us. It's great down there, Gatsby. I'm sure. Enjoy your night, did you, watching the telly? You're wasting your life, I'm telling you. You'll end up an old maid, you will. Well, gives it a bit of body, do not it? Cheers, love. Cheers. Yeah, I can't. Cheers. Cheers. Right, let's get down to business. When and how? They're the $64 questions, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like with almost everything you can think of. Except with sex. There's also a wear to that which is pretty important. You two are a bit forward for your ages, aren't you? We're students. Of course, yeah, I love it. Right. Now, if we're to get maximum impact... Maximum impact? Have you ever worked for Madison Avenue? Eh? Doesn't matter. Right. We'll decide when for a start. Oh, no. We're kidnapped you now, and then we just sit around drinking tea and whiskey and discussing the meaning of life until they pay up. Socrates never had it any better. Oh, will you shut up, I'm thinking. Sorry. Mind blown, isn't it? Yeah, the human brain at work. You'd think there'd be some sort of outward sign, though, wouldn't you? Yeah, like the scalp rippling or the nose twitchy. Mm -hmm. Middle of the dinner time rush. That's the best time to do it. Definitely. You want us to kidnap you from the actual pub? Of course I do. In a blaze of publicity. Dinner time, definitely. And then ten minutes after I've gone, the place will grind to a shuddering halt. Ten minutes after that, you two get your ransom. How much do we ask for? Mm. Fifty quid. Oh, twenty's more realistic. You'll change your mind when you see me all dolled up, love. Right, well, that's when decided. How about how? Well, I'll leave that to you. Just so long as you don't put an empty fertiliser sack over me head, eh? Don't sound a bit yet, Mrs. Alton. No, Mrs. Walker. Are you quite sure you saw her getting into a car? She said she was going to the vets with a bird. Well, there was a bird in the car, all right, and a young fella. And do you know, I'm sure I've seen them somewhere before. I'm sure I have. Mm. Mrs. Alton. Yes, Mrs. Walker. Do you ever feel that the lives of the rest of the world are far more devious than your own? Well, how do you mean exactly? Not quite so straightforward, roundabout. Mm. Nothing quite what it seems to be. Yeah, well, I don't know about the rest of the world, but Stanley certainly is. I mean, his right foot doesn't know what his left's doing, never mind his right hand. Really? It's a wonder he doesn't keep falling flat on his face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very good, that was his walk. Well, was, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. No. Hi, hi. So are you? I'm suffering now, but I don't want any sympathy. 
it in a worthwhile cause. I won't go and give you any sympathy. I've just brought you weekly ration of love stories and horoscopes. Mavis forgot to put them in with paper, so I've had a go at her, and now she's sulking. So think yourself lucky you're suffering just from a hangover. I take it it is a hangover. A Gatsby hangover, actually. Oh, oh that reminds me. Ralph, what's his name? You know? Lancaster? Mm. He said he can do with you down there singing. Why is that? If you heard her that's on there this week, you wouldn't ask. He sounds like a blue bottle trapped behind the curtains. Oh, so he said he wants me, does he? Yeah, and he said it with a gleam in his eye and all. He always does love when he talks about me. See ya. Ciao. It was a tiny miracle, Mrs. Walker. It really were. I had no idea they gave birds syrup of figs. It was only a tiny drop, mind you. But that bird were back on its feet before you could say, Cop Robin. Incredible. I suppose they must get, you know, like we do. It's all the bread they eat at this time of the year. Exactly. Mrs. Walker? Yes, dear. Why are you wearing that expression on your face that says you don't believe a word what I'm saying? Well, I don't believe every word, Bert. I believe the conjunctions like and and but and... When are you ready, love? Yes, Len. Two pints of it, please, Alan. Yes, of course. Bert, you heard Len's order? No, I didn't, Mrs. Walker. Oh, I'm quite sure you did. Bert will look up to you, gentlemen. Been giving you a hard time, has she? Don't worry. Revenge is sweeter than wine, as my Auntie Harriet used to say, and she read it, so... I'm quite well aware that it is a roll of lino, Mr. Yates. But what I would really like to know is why you thought it necessary to bring it in my premises. Well, I couldn't leave it outside, could I? I don't see why not. Well, it might give it a complex. And what sort of complex would you get if you were left permanently outside my public house? And finish your drink and take it away. I don't know why we keep coming in here to be treated like a load of school kids. Well, she's not the only queer landlady, you know. Her at the Globe in Russell Street, she times how long it takes you to sup half a pint a mile. And if it's more than ten minutes, she starts flicking salted peanuts at you. Yeah, well, I'm thinking of taking my valued custom somewhere where I get a better respect. Who's the line of her? Harvey Tilsley. Oh, you're giving it to her for a new house, are you? I'm selling it, eh? Don't be funny. She ordered it, she ordered it yesterday. But she'd be daft if she buys out of you. And Ivy Tills is not daft. Do you know something, Albus? What? The landlady isn't the only person I find offensive in here. Wait, wait for the naval officer. <laughs> hey, who's your friend? She prefers to remain anonymous. Oh. Hey, what's your new labourer doing with that roll of our club? Don't ask me, love, I don't know. Oh. What are you having? Well, I'll have um, a vodka and tonic, cos I'm celebrating. No, no, it's your birthday, your 30th. Ah, oh, don't he say lovely things? Buy him a drink as well. A vodka and tonic, please, love, and two more pints. Yeah. What are you celebrating? Well, Ralph Lancaster asked me if I'd do a favour for him. What sort of favour? Now, you see how his voice is altered. I've already mentioned Ralph Lancaster's name. What sort of favour? Well, he's got himself landed with a Duff singer this week and he wants me to take over. Starting when? Tonight. Right, I'll come with you. I could do with a night out. It were only last night you were saying this is as far as you could go. I don't go, you don't go. Hey, you're looking a lot better. Ken, didn't I say he was looking better? Definitely. Chop, chop <laughs> with those drinks, Bet. What's going on? I think Bert's being kidnapped, Mrs. Walker. Where's photographers? Well, there's no photographers. Why? They're, they're all too busy photographing the mayoress. She's been kidnapped today as well. Her? She's not even flaming photogenic. She's got a face like a donkey. She's worth more than you are. OK, baby, get in the car. All right, all right. Don't overdo it. Hiya, Hildy. Sorry to dash off again. Hey, give that to the Dowager Duchess in there. Oh, V, 
Really, Mrs. Ogden, how does a small woman like you manage to transform herself into a battering ram? Any news about Mrs. Walker? Two more phone calls, obviously disguised voices, all very childish. Mm. Yeah, well, a lot of these terrorists are students, you know, like that Douglas Bard a lot. The Barder-Meinhof gang, Mrs. Ogden, a German concoction. Mr. Barder is an English gentleman. Yeah. Still, I wouldn't like to be carried off by him. I mean, it might start off as a prank, but once they've got you on your own, well, it's a temptation, isn't it? You know, to, uh... I hardly think you need worry in that respect, Mrs. Ogden. How much have you collected for the ransom, then? Not very much, I'm afraid. Mm. Pay 20s, five cards and pontoons only. Oh, aren't you having some bad luck? Can't we play something else? Like... Uh, Scrabble. I've got one in the car. You keep trying to get me to do something intellectual, don't you? And I keep telling you I'm just a simple little girl. Hey, Twisting or what? I'll stick. Coward. Harvey. Twist. You know, I'm beginning to think you're not as indispensable Twist. to this pub as you like to think. You wait till tonight, love. So there's a bit more brass floating about. I'm tired and I'm hungry. There's a lot of waiting about to crime, love. Like when you're in prison. Pay 21s, five cards and pontoons only. We can always play strip poker. No, my look, I'll be the only one finished up stripped. So, we'll play strip poker. I called a couple of times this afternoon, you know, but there was nobody in, like. Well, there wouldn't be, would they? We go out to work in here, you know. It means me and my mum do. Your dad just clocks on at Livesey's, don't you, Dad? You know Livesey's. You all have to camp. Hey, listen, Sarki. Everything we produce at Livesey's goes for export. Everything. <laughs> to say the last ship carrying exports made at Livesey's had sales. Uh -huh. Is that right, Dad? What would the youth know, eh, Squire? About here grafting their socks off, eh? What would they know? <laughs> I understand it's a bit of a closed boot with you and all working for a living. Who said that? I happen to be gainfully employed at the moment. <laughs> I might have known. Couldn't you two wait till I go home before you start eating your tea? Eh? I hope you've left me some. Of course we have, ma'am. That'll make a change. Not much, though. Oh, you better be joking, laddo. Eh, uh, hello, Ivy. Oh, hello, Eddie. I've uh, brought the stuff, you know. It's uh, marvellous, it is. It's uh, seen in all the posh houses, this, you know. You've probably seen it in that uh, Edward and Mrs Simpson. Haven't you told him, Bert? Told me what? The word's gone out on you, mate. Who heard? What word? Tell him, Dad. Tell him, Ivy. You tell him. Well, I wish someone had flaming tell me. Well, it's nothing personal, you know what I mean. It's just that we've decided to buy from a, from a proper shop, like, you see. Uh, I know somebody in the trade and they're going to give us a bit of discount. Who's been blackening my character? Oh, don't tell me. Albert Tatlock. I shouldn't worry about it. He's blackening nearly everybody's in the street. Nothing personal, you know what I mean. We're just playing safe to attest the water, so to speak. She being newcomers, we've just got to be a bit careful. I'm sorry, Eddie. I mean, I'd have took it like a shot, but, but well, he's more careful. Well, what am I going to do with a great roll of lino? Will you tell me that? Stick it up, you... Brian! Well, what else can you do with it? I'll live to regret this. I know I will. Do shut up, yeah. You don't have to go out with Susie, you know. You can always stop in. What? Wait to see if he condescends to call. No, Susie's right about that. I've finished with him. <laughs> so you say. I don't care if I never set eyes on him again. Yes. Well, that's going to be chancy with him living just down the street. Well, I'll not talk to him then. Elsie? Hmm? Do you think I'm doing the right thing going out with Susie and the mates? Well, you can hardly be sent to eternal damnation just for going out for one night, can't you? Just watch yourself, and you know what I mean. Yeah, I'll do that, no danger. Well, you've nothing to worry about then, have you? Hey, are you ready, Potter? Because if you're not, I'm going. Paul doesn't like to be kept waiting. I'm ready. Oh, wonders will never cease. The same dress, two nights running. Well, I'll probably get another one next week. Paul likes me to look nice. He says a compliment to him. Come on. Hey. What? You keep your eye on her, you know. She's not a kid, Elsie. I know, but neither are you, but you behave like one sometimes. Oh, change the flaming record. Hey, those girls, you know. I wish I was 15 years younger. Yes, that Susie's too smart for her own good sometimes. Elsie. Oh, now I know what we're going to get. Another little piece of Irish homespun philosophy. Elsie, young people have to find their way, their heart, their head, whatever. And it's a dangerous business. There are casualties, you know. 
Like my uncle, Sylvester Mooney. He invested all his money in silk stockings. The day they invented tights. Oh, you dumb <laughs> 36, 37. There are 277 flowers on that wallpaper. I should know. I've counted them often enough myself. I know, but it's still something to do. 38, 39. I thought you students were supposed to be good conversationalists. Yeah, but conversation's a two-way thing. We both have to converse about something. And I'm afraid I can't converse about your sex life. I do see your point. What do you know about the cop Robin? Nothing. It's a problem, isn't it? That'll be Josie. I know. Alf Roberts uses a different code. You've been a long time. What's that? Your answer. How, uh, four pounds, fifty-six and a half p. Four quid? Well, I, I don't believe it. We were lucky to get that much. Well, isn't the pub coming to a grinding halt like she said it would? We've hardly missed her. Eh? Don't be silly. It is marvellous. Weeks out of the business and you wouldn't know it. I mean, you really wouldn't know it. She practices a lot in the bath. You're a very lucky man, you know that? Hey, what's this I hear about heart attack? You've heard wrong, it wasn't a heart attack. You just passed out, that's all. Oh, really? Overwork, you know. <laughs> so I'm going to be a very lucky man for a long time to come. Oh, I sincerely hope so. Great, great. Oh, that was fabulous, Rita, as ever. Oh, you said the loveliest things, and they're all true. I'm witty with it. I've just been telling Len what a very lucky man he is. I tell him every day. <laughs> Listen, I must fly. Uh, can't stand here ogling you all night. Anything you want at the bar, you know? And you're on again. You just said the word. Soon as. Right. Oh, he's not so bad. Hey, you don't have to stop all night, you know. I can easily go in taxi home. I'm stopping just as long as you, I hope. And I'll tell you something. When you've done your next stint, I'm dancing your size nines off. You can be dominant when you want to be. <laughs> hey, let's have another dance, darling, eh? No, thank you. Gail's not used to the nightlife. You thrive on it, though, don't you, eh? I'm just talking. What, bubbly? Oh, and not before time. My palate feels as though it's going through withdrawal symptoms. Do you know, I swear you'd live off champagne if you could. Well, don't tax <laughs> Tax smart thing to do, <laughs> definitely. Not for me, thank you. Oh, well, anything you want, just shout, right? Yeah, wouldn't mind that new singer. <laughs> wouldn't we all? She's a great little lady. <laughs> Come on, darling, have a drink. If you've hardly had one tonight, don't be a Spanish for it. No, thank you. Well, you said she was a lot of fun, Susan. She usually is. Go on, get have a drink. It won't kill you. I don't want a drink. No one in rain, thank you very much. For Pete's sake, what have you come for? A bloody choir practice or what? It's the wrong night, darling. It was a bit strong, wasn't it, Frank? <laughs> what, right little frosty nigger she is, isn't I'm she? Talk to her. A bit of a boozer, then. A bit of a boozer. I can't find my cloakroom ticket. Are you not going? Just watch me. Oh, please, girl, don't let me down. Let you down? What about you letting me down, bringing me to meet a creep like that? Oh, he's not that bad. He's a creep. You know what he's after, Susie. Well, I'm sorry I'm not that cheap, even if you are. I'm having a good time. All right, Susie. Yeah. <laughs> no luck. Ah, she's no loss anyway, love. Anyway, Frank's found himself an old flavor. Sandra, if you can tear yourself away just for one minute, meet Susie. Hello. <laughs> Stop <laughs> it, Frank. Talk about it after first. <laughs> oh, she's a great girl, is Sandra, you know. Likes a lot of fun. <laughs> she's your type. <laughs>
We're still doing that roofing job in Garibaldi Street. I'd hate to take out rearrange my muscles for nothing. We are. That's if you think you can hold your weight. Ah, that's not nice, boss. Hey, listen, I'll tell you what. You come and give us a hand, and then I won't feel me pride here so much. Hey, are, mate. This is what's known throughout the tree. There's a wage packet. You can got your name on. You're a gent, boss. Something of a collector's item for you, isn't it? Hey, hang on. What's the matter? You've sure changed us again. Oh, that's what we agreed. Less tax and insurance. What, as much as that again? Well, where the hell do you think they find the money from to pay fellows like you and your mates when you're out of work? Isn't it marvellous? Here's me trying to do an honest job, and I end up keeping layabouts like Monkey on the lap of flaming luxury. <laughs> Join the club, mate. <laughs> oh, flaming it. Oh, that was bound to happen, wasn't it? It's been on the blink for weeks. You must have had it since the flood. That's no reason for it packing it in at this time in the morning, is it? If you want to know what time it is, it's time you weren't here. No to do with the time. It's just that if I miss me Terry Bogan in the morning, I feel deprived. <laughs> I'll tell him next time I see you. Here, you wouldn't like to pop upstairs and well, get me yours, would you? Mine? You've never stopped telling me to turn it off since I moved here. Yes, at half past midnight, I'll go on telling you. But this time in the morning is different, oh, isn't right. it? I hate to see a fellow mortal suffering. Oh, flipping heck, that's all I needed. Radio on the brink and she'd coming down looking like she spent the night under the viaduct. Why don't you make an effort in the morning like we do? I mean, like you sometimes do. Oh. Is that my magazine? Yeah. I were only looking at Have it. Have you tried asking? You know what you can do with your rotten magazine? The same as I can do with me fellas, I suppose. Well, you needn't worry. It's the last time I do out for you. You made a right fool of me, you did. That's nothing to what you were trying to make me. Uh, uh, is this a private argument or can anybody No, it's all in? yours. I'm going. Hey, what about the radio? And what was all that in, Ada? Look, I'm not daft, you know. It was something that happened last night, wasn't it? You didn't come back together, did you? Well, how would you feel if you set up a force when your mate walked out on you? Ah, listen, you're not going to get any sympathy from me on that score. None at all. You shouldn't have tried to drag Gail into that scene. She's not that sort of a girl. No one got her, did they? No, well, you're not exactly full of the joys of spring, either of you, this morning. What did happen last night? Aren't you late for work? All right, suit yourself. Is that it? What's up? Don't tell me you're scared of heights. No, James, yeah. Come on, get your muscles working. Hey, hang on, we've got to tell her we're here, haven't we? Oh, suit yourself. Keep your enthusiasm, yeah. Hello, Mr. Fairfield. Good morning, love. Uh, we're just telling you we're starting on the roof any minute now. All oh, right, thanks very much. And if there's all you want, let us know. Eh, yeah. that isn't toast I can smell, is it? I was just going to have my breakfast. Hey, you wouldn't like a cup of tea, would you, before you start? Oh, that would be very nice, love, sir. Won't be a second. Kettle has boiled. What happened to all that flaming enthusiasm you were talking about? Now then, Leonard, don't get worked up. You know it's bad for you. I can't find my dinner, ma'am. Hey? My butties, I'm late already. Oh, heck, I'm sorry, love. I forgot. Do you know, I've had that much on my mind this morning. I can't find half my things. Can't you get some out for once, love? I suppose I'll have to, won't I? It's bad for you anyway, too much bread. Well, you try telling me stomach that at half twelve. Oh, so you decided to show your face this morning, have you? I thought you were taking time off to give us hand in here. What? Well, I have to shave me every morning now, don't I? Yeah, but you don't have to take flipping newspaper with you, do you? See ya. Have I done damn malnutrition before half five? Oh, no danger. It's all right. <laughs> malnutrition him. <laughs> I forgot to do his butties, didn't I? Hey. What's up with him these days? Do you know what? He's hardly said two words to me. Do you know what, Bert? Come to think of it, he's hardly spoke to me either, not since that Gail Potter gave him elbow. Aye. Oh, well, the sooner he gets back with her, the better it'll be as far as I'm concerned, you know what I mean? Mm. I think I preferred him as he was. Well, look, Bert, you talk to him about it, not me. Look, if you want to make yourself useful, go and grab hold of this and hold it against this wall for me. What for? Because he's cheaper than buying a picture hook, isn't it, you daft bat? I want to see what it looks like. Mm, it looks all right to me. Bert, the wall. Hecky, thump. I'd have been better off at work, wouldn't you? Get off, you know, you're enjoying yourself. There we are. That's it. I think so, yes. Oh, no, no. There was something else. Um, table tennis balls. Now, there must be an answer to that, but I can't think of one at the moment. 
Any road, I think you're out of luck. We haven't got any. Now, we've got a very nice line in big gobstoppers, if they're any use to you. Well, that might be a very good idea with the noise that some of those kids make over there. Oh, right. the Greta. They're under the counter down there. Oops, oh, sorry. <laughs> Maybe it's been spring cleaning again. All right, well, I'd better take the two boxes, because right. um, they're always getting squashed. Uh, we well, they would, wouldn't they? I blame the government myself. Yeah, well, why not? We blame them for everything else, don't we? Bye. Yes, to well. Hello. Can you change his back, please? What car? Small change, silver if you can spare it. And if I can't? Anything you can manage. Oh, come here. Well, the tills listed to settle in all right, then. Have they? <laughs> Thought you'd have known. Oh, that reminds me while you're here. Uh, do you think you could drop the lad's motorbike magazine off for me? He usually calls for it on his way to work, but he must have forgot to got up late. Got up late, you can depend on it. He wouldn't forget that rotten motorbike magazine if a flipping house fell on top of him. Do I detect a note of discord across the path of true love? You could say that, yeah. Oh, sorry, I didn't know. No reason why you should. Is that why you were at the Gatsby last night, all on your own, Sam? Not quite on my own, Sam. No, I did notice. Yeah, well, thanks for the change. See You're you. welcome. Toronto. Bye. Oh, I seem to put my foot in it good and proper. Well, if you want my considered, unbiased opinion. Yes, you have. Weatherford 8825. Hello, Paul. Tired, do I? No, not really. Oh, it sounds great. Hope you have a good time. No, Paul, I, I don't want to go tonight. No, not tomorrow either. Paul, I've had enough of it. The late nights, the bright lights. It's not my scene anymore. Yeah, I know we've had some good times together. I'm not being silly, Paul. No, I won't change my mind. Listen, Paul, I, I've begun to see myself differently. And I don't like what I see. Yeah, so ta-ra, Paul, and thanks for everything. Right, you reckon you can manage now, then, eh? Safe as a Titanic. Stop worrying. Make you old before your time. All right, if you want anything, just give us a ring, eh? I'm not totally useless, you know. That is a popular misconception put about by people to damage my character. I'll see you down the yard. Right. Four fifty-six and a half. Bet wouldn't like that. I bet they'd have got more for me. Ah, uh, well, that all depends now, Frederick, doesn't it? Oh, on what? On how much they're charging per pound. Hey, just watch it, sunshine. This is all muscles, you know. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, I believe. So well, it could be having all these traits hey, about has he been in? Oh, Who's that then, Stan? The king of the carver rifles or the queen mother? Eddie Yates. Oh, <laughs> some of us have to graft, you know. Well, I'm entitled to a dinner break, can't I? Oh, well, maybe he's found under the water, you know, eh? Ah, oh, typical, isn't it? A few quid in his pocket. Doesn't know where his mates are. Where's my dad then? He's having the kip, isn't he? He's worn out thinking about giving us hand in that house. Those pies are they? Are they hot? It says so, doesn't it? Yeah, give us a cold, please. Yeah, okay. Don't move, ma'am. Yeah. No, thanks. I'll have some of we dad later on. Hello. 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 Hey, Who we'll let you out? It's this new idea that's got over there to make us feel great ups at bosses and increase in productivity. It's called as dinner hour. It's not that time already, is it? But hey, can't it flown this morning? Got everything in now, have you? I hope so, kid, but it's going to take me a month to find it all. There you go. Why, oh, them pies smell good. Hey, they do. What do you want? One apiece? Aye. What's up with you? Hey, take the notice on him, kid. He's unlucky in love, isn't he? Oh, you should have said I'm not doing out tonight. What are you drinking? No, we'll get us all. Don't be daft, it's a shout. Oh, well, if you've nobody else to spend your money on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, talk at devil. I'm not gooseberry am I? Well, would it make any difference if you were? Take the weight off your feet, love. Can I get some? Yeah, fruit juice, please. I should have thought you'd have found somebody more interesting to talk to. Oh, I? Yes, not a million miles from here. And ten times more your type. It's not me that ain't speaking. Oh, you could have fooled me. Yes, quiet. Uh, fruit juice, please. Orange, I think, is for Gail. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hey, uh, Brian will get that. Oh, oh, that's all right. No, honest, he won't, sir. Well, if you insist. I never said a word. You didn't have to love them big, sexy eyes that you asked said it all for you. Leave off, will you? He's definitely got it bad, else. He's like a sick tom. 
been lucky for days. Well, what are you going to do about it? There's nothing to can do about it, is Oh, you can't let yourself off your frills like that. I mean, just think if it were you, what you'd want. I'd want people like you to mind your own business, wouldn't I? You're only saying that because you mean it. Hang on a bit. Where are you going? <coughs> hey, uh, there's a fella over there who wants a word with you. Well, why don't he come himself? His legs haven't dropped off, have they? Not that I've noticed. He did say in private. Don't mind us. Well? He knows where he can find me. Right, I'll tell him. <laughs> what are you up to, you? Trying to put a bit of happiness back into your life. Hey, uh, you know that girl Potter? What about her? Well, she just said, like, if you've got a minute, she might be weird with you. She said that? Would I tell a lie? Hello. Hello, Brian. Well, what is it you wanted? Me? Yeah. I thought you wanted to talk to me. That Vera Flaming Duckworth. I see. Uh, come on, let's get out of the danger zone if you're going to scratch each other's eyes out. My love. You don't have to stop if you don't want to. But I do. I, I do want to talk to you. To say I was sorry. I would have been phoned, even if it was chance, have you? I don't suppose I have, no. Any road, I am sorry. I didn't want to have a row with you. Neither did I. Look, I've not gotten long now. I'll pick you up from work. If your motorbike don't break down. No, I'll be there. If I've got to hop on one leg, I'll be there. Good afternoon, Mrs. Uh, uh, I've been up on next door's roof, uh, next door this way, repairing it, like, and I happen to notice that you could be in for a spot of bother. Bother? How do you mean? Well, Slate, you've got one or two gone, you know, only it's uh, a lot of wind in February, you know. Well, we hadn't noticed. No, well, of course you wouldn't, would you? I mean, you've got no cause to look up, have you? <laughs> That's where you're lucky I was up there. We can actually do the job before it gets any worse. Only, uh, only I might be able to fit you in, you know. Oh, I'm dead cheap and all. Only I've got all my gear with me, you see. It's certainly lucky you spotted it, Mr... Uh... Uh, Yates. Yates and Fairclough. Yes, well, uh, that's what we're here for, isn't it? To help each other through life's twisted paths. <laughs> to do, you can drop these in and watch them spinning round at the laundrette. Did you hear what I said? Sorry about the laundrette. It is the height of bad manners to go on reading when somebody's talking to you. All right, why don't you get it off your chest? There's nothing to get off my chest. Oh, don't worry, that I wasn't born yesterday. It's something that happened last night, isn't it? Isn't it? It's got nothing to do with you, Elsie. I happen to think it's got everything to do with me. Everything. And while you're under my roof, I'm entitled to be treated with something like civility. Now, come on. I wasn't born yesterday. I might just be able to help you. I don't think so. Try me. What happened? I told you, Gail got cold feet. Yeah, I know about that. Not that. What happened to you? Well, I, I set up a foursome with Paul and a mate of his. It, it was after she left. What happened? Paul's mate went up to the bar and picked up another girl, just like that. Imagine what a right tart she was. Yeah, I know. I know the type. I've seen them hanging around there. Well, what's that got to do with you? Everything. Paul made it perfectly clear. He rated me in exactly the same way. Couple of good time girls, out a couple of drinks and we're anybody's. And there's me thinking I, I was something special. What made it worse? He didn't even notice he'd upset me. He rang me today and asked me to go out with him tonight and nothing had happened, not a word about last night. Just a click of his fingers and I'd be there. Good old Susie, bit of a giggle. 
What did you tell him? I told him to forget it. You're learning. Seems to do nothing else these days, Elsie. Look at me, my whole life's a flaming mess. I can't meet a decent fella, I can't get a decent job. Oh, Elsie, what have I got to look forward to? What have you got to look forward to? Only your own flaming life to look forward to. And I'll tell you something else as well. You've got to take a few hard knocks in this world before you appreciate the things that are worthwhile. And I know what I'm talking about, love. And I'll tell you something else and all. You're getting all the hard knocks done and over with while you're young. I wish to heck I had. And I'll tell you something else. If it had been my two I'd been talking to sitting here, they wouldn't have been getting tea and sympathy. It'd have been a clout round the ear all they'd be getting. No, I mean about... Oh, well, I hardly like to say it. Suit yourself. No, I'm just looking at these records that started me off, and I just wondered if you'd ever regretted not taking your singing more seriously. I do take it seriously. No, I mean when you were younger, like. Mavis, what are you trying to say? Well, it, it, we're looking at these record mm. covers. And, well, I mean, I've heard you sing, and you're really not bad at all. Well, you, you're quite good, in fact. And, I just wondered if you'd ever regretted not taking your singing more seriously when you were younger, like. Cos, I mean, if you had, well, you might have been on one of these record covers now. Oh, you just think of it. I have. Really? Really. And I come to the conclusion I make more money selling them than making them. Ah, oh, well, maybe you could now. Just think what might have been. How do you mean? What might have been? Well, I mean, you could have been somebody now, couldn't you? I'd change the record if I were you, Mavis, while you're still winning. Well, you could. You could have been driving round in a big Rolls Royce now, and instead of just, well, just married to, you know. No, we don't. Tell us. I'm sorry, Mr. Fairclough. I didn't know you were here. Making a habit of opening a big gob today, aren't we, Riley? Well, you might have said. What? And spoil all your fun? Now, Lord and Master, what can I do for you? Uh, give us a couple of packets of spuggy, will you, love? Right. I'm one of those little cash boots, like the one I carried around in my pocket. Okay. All right for some people. I take it you're talking about me, Stanley. Ah, the organ grinder. Your monkey's on a roof in Garibaldi Street. That's right, Mrs. Watson's. Well, he wasn't on Mrs. Watson's when I saw him. Well, he should be. He's on Mrs. Sims. Mrs. Sims? Next door. No, no, I've only just left him, Stanley. When I left him, he was on top of Mrs. Watson's. He's not there now. I know those houses like the back of my hand. They're good payers. And I can always count on a cup of tea at Mrs. Sims. I'll see you later. You've got to learn how to handle that fella. He's not a member of the human race. Mm -hmm. Eddie Yates. Thanks very much, Mr. Yates. Happy to oblige, Mrs. Sims. Uh, could you tell me something? What's that, Mr. Yates? Uh, the lady next door, what's her name? This side, you mean, Mrs. Fox? Oh, right. Only, uh, it's a funny thing, but she's got exactly the same trouble. No slates? Exactly the same. Well, perhaps you could mention it to her. I'm sure she'd be ever so grateful. Oh, I will, yeah. Anyway, cheerio. What the hell do you think you're playing at? Stan Ogden just said he's seen you up on that roof. Ogden's oh, right. Are you daft or what? Now then, Leonard, remember your condition. Never mind, it's your condition you should be worried about, not mine. Now, is that any way to speak to a fellow who's been busy lining your pockets? What do you want about? Well, when I was doing Mrs. Watson's, I noticed that this house next door needed doing. So I did that and all. You've done this as well? Yes. Yeah. Not only that, I've got another one lined up for tomorrow morning. Hey, what a difference this artificial light it makes, doesn't it? It makes it a lot warmer, doesn't it, kid? Oh, more cosy. I was thinking smaller. I think it's because you've got your curtains pulled. Still, I mean, you could always put a big mirror over that wall. <laughs> you want to see your face? I'll throttle you in a minute, <laughs> lady. No, honestly, it's very nice. Here, man. What do we have to? Come on, but you do. You know it's a special occasion. Well, you know it always gives me a headache. Look, can't I have a camp? Oh, go on, Ivy. Let him have what he wants. It is his house and all. 
Go on, you don't half lower tone. It's our love. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll suffer it slower. Cheers. Cheers? Hang on. It's supposed to be an official christening, this. Yeah, come on, speech. Go on, then. Oh, you do it, I don't know what to say. Well, I'd just like... Well, we'd both like to wish you much happiness in your new home. And we hope it turns out as happy as Income and Street were. Yeah, and that goes for me as well. Well, Tal, that's very nice of you both. Hey, love. Yeah, it is very nice. Thanks, Vera. Now what's up with you? Oh, well, I'll leave her alone, Bert. It is a big strain moving. Well, I mean, that were a good house, was, wasn't it, Income and Street? Well, it was you that wanted to move, love. Well, I know it wasn't. I mean, I'm, I'm happy here now, but, I mean, we had some good times there, didn't we? It's like saying Tarrard's were part of your life, isn't it? Well, I'm sure this will be an all Ivy. Look, if you don't like it after six months, you can always give it to us. How does that so? Come on, Ivy, it's supposed to be a happy occasion, this. All right, come on, cheer up. I'll tell you what, we'll slip our coats on, nip down to Rovers for one, eh? Rovers? After all the trouble I've taken, what, to christen my new house? I'll give you Rovers, Bert Tilsley. Look, tonight you'll enjoy yourself and you'll enjoy yourself in here. So sup up, shut up, as I break your flipping arm. <laughs> you know, I couldn't get used to working nights myself. Well, it's not the working that gets you down, it's the hanging about in between. How long have you been driving the taxis? Too long for my liking. There we are. You did say coffee, didn't you? Lovely. And if it's not a cheeky answer, what have you been doing too long for your liking? I asked him how long you've been driving taxis. Oh, that. What's that supposed to mean? Nothing, except it seems to be a question that only the very young ask these days. And you see, when you get to our age, time doesn't seem to make any difference anymore. See, it's a fair bet that whatever you're doing now, you'll still be doing when you get put out to grass. Not this, Kitty, I can assure you. No, oh, I... I mean it, Elsie. You give up taxi driving, give up. Why not? Well, because you're like me, you're too long in the tooth to change your spots. You know, if you give up taxi driving, you'd be wandering around like a lost soul within a week. Is that so? Well, that shows what a rotten judge of character you were, doesn't it? Oh, Moffat, Ron, you'd be driving that taxi down to the post office to draw your pension. <laughs> Maybe you'll believe it when you see it. With your own eyes. And you won't have too long to wait. Thanks for the flask. Be careful. See you. See ya. You came on a bit strong, didn't you? And you really see him giving up cab driving. Not unless they bring back horse trams. Don't think he was joking myself. His toast burned near. Oh, suffering, Willie. Will you put me a new plug on that toaster, Bert? Will you? Oh, we'll have to have new plugs on everything, never mind toaster. Well, if it has to be new plugs, it'll have to be. Well, you have to change them in the first place, I don't know. Because he wants modern ones in here, doesn't he? Yeah, well, we'll just have to put that down to the common market and all, won't we? Brian! I'm here. Yeah. I'm up. And not before time. Here it is. I've got ten minutes. You are not going to work with no breakfast, Brian. Give us a piece of toast to eat it on my bike. And you would, you, you're that daft. I hope burnt offering. Well, you know what you can do about it, Bert? Honest. And, Brian, don't brush your hair at the table. How many times have I got to tell you? Just another way of getting more money out of you, you know. What is? Changing our plugs. Square holes is just another sales gimmick. I mean, what's wrong with round holes? Don't ask me, Bert. No, no, you know what I mean? It's no good asking anybody, is it? There's no answer to it. Brian, do you have to do that? What? Dip your toast in your tea. Well, I like it. Well, it's disgusting. Yeah, but it's nice, though, isn't it? Oh, I've tried bringing him up. Right, well, I'm off. Here, you want to keep yourself wrapped up these mornings? You're only keeping me warm just till the mortgage is paid off. Look, we're here now, aren't we? And you're going to like it. And I'll tell you what, I'll get you an egg tomorrow, all right, because I'll make sure you unpack egg cups. All right, love. Right, love. Sure. Yeah. I hope you're keeping your eye on that clock, Brian. No, it's all right for some, isn't it? Well, I'll tell you what, you'll stop at all with me and you'll see what graft is. No, no, Tom. Hello, love. Come on in. Hello. Cheerio. Cheerio. I won't come so close to him, Quill. It'll put you off. If put anybody off him, where he dips his toast <laughs> in his tea. Hi. Hi. Are you going to give us a lift to yeah, work? Yeah, right. Right on, Mum. We're off. Oh, do you know I never knew I'd give birth to a flaming Martian? <laughs> hey, 
Hey, is that all the marmalade? Yeah, well, you can just go shopping this morning, can't you, and get yourself some more. And this place needs bottoming and all. Oh, I'm a lady of leisure, mate. Not in this house. Where are you going with that? Back to bed. Well, it's the best place to stay warm, isn't it? It says burn the electric fire. Oh, it's all right for some. Uh, he didn't puff round then this morning. Well, does it look like he did? Oh, you must have upset him last night. Me upset him? I never. You did. You said he was all talk. Well, that was just you talking. Oh, now you can't put that one on me. He comes in here full of big ideas and you poured cold water all over him. It didn't seem like that, did it? Did it? What was he talking about, oh, anyway? Well, how do I know? He, he must have had something in the back of his head. He'll probably never know now. Likely as not, never show his face again. ta -ra. Good job. Good morning. Am I late? Are you early? We made ten minutes. Hey, well, you're ready to get cracking then. Well, I wouldn't go that far, but I am here. Have they? Not been sleeping very well at night. You know why that is? Because you kept a lot during the day. Hey, now that's not fair. I've been grafting, haven't I? Ah, oh, well, that's what it is. It's bad for your system. No, nah, it's not that. It's Monkey's car. All oh, right. Eh? Well, he won't buy himself any antifreeze, you see. What's that got to do with it? Well, he's got this thing goes under the engine, you know, and he puts a night light in it, like. And then he uh, sticks a couple of blankets on the top, and I end up waking up in the middle of the night with the overcoat falling on the floor again. What a pathetic little picture. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Why don't you buy yourself a couple of blankets, then? Well, it'd have to be cheaper to buy him his antifreeze. Well, why don't you buy him some? Why should I buy him his antifreeze? Look, before I go as daft as you, mate, let's get the van loaded up and get round to Gurry Baldy Street, eh? It's just the third roof, isn't it? Yeah, Mrs. Fox. Right, we call it half a day. Half a day on that roof, it'll be me that needs the antifreeze. Uh, your missus still on this uh, singing caper, is she? Yeah, you know what it's like, keeps her quiet. Must have a fun way of singing, then. Yeah, that's <laughs> day, but you know what I'm talking about. Hey, listen, if you give us a sub, we can go over there and give her a big hand. You're joking. It's cost me enough, that singing career of hers. Come on, it's nice money, isn't it? Oh, aye, yeah. Keeps her in these fancy showbiz hairdos, you know. Gives her glamorous ideas. Barely keeps her happy. You'd do anything to keep her happy, wouldn't you? Yeah, but don't tell her that, will you? <laughs> right, apart from the cat, he's at the lot now. Yeah, and I'm all set, boss. Should be a piece of cake. Oh, I do feel sorry for you. Up there in this weather. Oh, don't worry, missus. The chef will be here in a minute. <laughs> oh, cheerful little fella, isn't he? Nice to see you happy in your work. Would you like a cup of tea? Warm you up before you start. Yeah, well, uh, that'll be very nice, love. Very nice, ta. Right, then. I've got everything I need now. Yeah, not for me, thanks, love. I've got to be off, you know. People ought to be warned against you. Me fatal charm. <laughs> you look like something out of the lady killers, Ron. Just my old suit, so. What's it all in aid of? Um, little bit of business. Well, you can't be going to a wedding, you've not got a buttonhole. And you can't be going to a funeral. Well, not with that anchor, you can't. But she said she'd be long. I thought I'd just might catch her, you know. She knew what time she takes a dinner. She'll be 20 minutes yet. Y you don't mind if I, uh... Oh, feel free, you know you told me, yeah? Do you want a cup of coffee? Uh, no, 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 thanks. Well, sit down, then. Um, no, no, it's all right. You're not even going to sit down? Well, to tell you the truth, I might be a little bit uncomfortable as the suit. I must have put on a bit of weight. Well, come on, what's it all about? Tell us. Well, you'll find out in due course, if you're still interested. You're going for a job or something? Or something. Is that what you were on about last night? Well, no, I don't think I'll tell you. You didn't put much faith in me last night, did you? I didn't know what you were talking about. I still don't. I just thought I might see her before. Still, probably just as well that I don't. Look, um, tell her I called and that I'll call again before I go on, all right? Ron? Yeah, yeah. Do you mind if I give you a bit of advice? Sure, go ahead. It's the hanky. It's a bit much, don't you think? You think? It makes into a bit of a dog's dinner, you know. Yeah. See? Ta -ra. No chance, Stanley. No flipping chance. I beg to differ. I beg to the banker. Look, it's either Belltown Warrior or Fair Domingo. I don't fancy either. I'm on this going. Oh, well, of 
giving you my advice. And your advice is good. That's why you're a rich man, is it? Well, I didn't exactly see you dropping your holes now, Stan, did I? Uh, no. Is Mrs. Walker in the back, Fred? No, she's away. She won't be back till this afternoon. Ah, uh, I'll be busy then. Well, can I take a message? Ah, uh, no, it's just that she wants me to do some tiling or something in the kitchen. Well, nick through the back and have a look if you like. No, not if she's not there, no. I don't exactly know what she wants. It must be a rough and ready job, otherwise she'd ask somebody who employs craftsmen. I beg your pardon, Stanley. Take no notice of him, Len. Somebody scoffed his porridge this morning. My porridge has been poached. As a matter of fact, he's turning out to be a very handy lad. He's picking it up, you know. Yeah, Give us a quick jill, will you? Aye, aye. Just beat the rush. Two gins, one tonic when you're ready, Fred. <coughs> one tonic? I wonder how Ivy's been on. Do you know how much she's up go. to there? Well, she's lucky in one thing, kid. There's not a lot wants to do in that house. Even so, moving, it's a terrible strain. Do you know we haven't moved from the house we got wedding? Oh, we moved once. It was that compulsory purchase thing, you know. There's a fire station there now where we used to live. Even so, you'd like to move sometimes, wouldn't you? Because I'll tell you what, it's going down round our way. You just can't imagine not rooting somehow, can you? Well, she's not moved, spitting distance. Anyway, I think it was how she wanted more than all. Oh, my course. It's very contemporary, isn't it? Yeah. Hey, I'll tell you what, we'll get a couple of pies and we'll go down calling on her, eh? Do you think she'll mind? No, she likes showing people around. There you go, one tonic. Hey, and a couple of pies, love to take out. Take out. You must be joking. Oh, go on, you know you fancy her. No, but she doesn't fancy me, though, does she? Oh, well, then just take an interest, that's all I'm saying. <sighs> no, I haven't got that brass. I haven't got the big jag. And from what I hear, uh, I'm about 30 years too young. Ah, and that's one thing you have got, youth. And it's an asset she might just begin to appreciate from what I hear. So go on, ask her out. She's very down, you know. No, I'm sorry, Elsie. I don't think even computer dating could get me and Susie together. All right, then ask me out. You're on. Chicken monkey, come on, buy us a drink. I will. Fred? Yeah, yeah, boss. Old side up. Ah, you cracked it, didn't you? No danger. Don't worry, it's all there. I haven't even had a pint out of it. It'd be your last if you did. Hey, where do you leave the gear? I left it down there. She was very good about that. I thought we'd have a shifty down the road, see if any more needed to, you know. What are you doing, shifting the streets with your boot? Come on, get us a pint. Fred, give me a pint. You two, come on in. <laughs> hey, uh, we just thought we'd call and see how you're getting on. You don't mind, do you? No, love, I just got my feet up for a minute. Do you know, you've no idea work in unwrapping things and then trying to find home for them, you know? Oh, I can well imagine. Still again, on, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Is it nice to have your little knickknacks round you? We brought some hot pies. Vera, I call that an inspiration, kid. You don't mind using your plates, do you? No, love. Come on, you're welcome. Go on in. So you what, you could put kettle on for me again, will you, love? I'd give us a wit table, will you, look? Oh, I'd I bet you're going to be ever so happy here. It's got a feel to it. I know I will look. I love it. That's because you've got a modern outlook. And you're Bert. Does he like it and all? Well, you know our Bert, kid. It'll start to show itself one way or another in about three years' time. <laughs> hey, we should have put these plates to warm, you know. But it doesn't matter, does it? Oh. One of you two are hungry, then? Well, we thought you'd have had something. Well, I like that, Vera. Hey, kid, we never thought. Well, you can start to think on your way back to Rovers, can't you, for yours? I dare say she's not run out. And while you're going, you can think it's about how you would never be so mean as to take your friend Ivy nothing for a dinner when she's been working hard all morning. Honestly, Vera, I'm very touched. Made a list of some of the stuff you can get, mate. Get down there after they've had their dinner, eh? Right, boss. And when you've done that, get over to George Hargreaves, will you? He's got some scaffolding for us. It's all go, innit? Eh, uh, I presume I can take the van. I mean, I don't have to carry the stuff in my pocket. Aye, go easy with it, will you, mate? That needs tender loving care of that van. Now, look, there's the list. Uh, tell him I don't want any gash and don't be all afternoon. Right, boss. Aye, aye. Eh. Uh, the boss is in there if you want him. Is he? Here's Chum. Chum, is it? Is what I can do for you? Well, he fits the description I was given of him anyway. Who does? That fella. He was described to me as a big fat scouse. So? So what was he doing messing about on my roof? 
Well, if I knew who you were, I could tell you, wouldn't I? Who am I? I'm Mr. Fox. That's who I am. And you're not happy with the job? 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 Oh, oh, oh that's a laugh. Aye, that's a laugh. That is. What job? He finished it off this morning, didn't he? Your wife paid him. I know, right? Well, she paid him. But what I don't know is what she paid him for. What exactly is your complaint? You're a load of con artists. That's Just my watch complaint. what you say, mate. And I will stand up in court and say it if I have to. There was nothing wrong with that roof, nout. I was up there day before yesterday fixing television aerial and it was flaming perfect. I remember admiring it. So somebody's conning somebody, aren't they? I'll have the money back. Now I I long on for nout. The money back. And I'll remind you that I have got your ladders and tools. Do you follow me? Eddie! Eddie! <laughs> This stuff on the van. What do you want it off? Keys. What's up? I had a fella in here a couple of minutes ago. Did you see him on the way out? Oh, that fella, yeah. Name of Fox. Might ring a bell. Got a baldy sleeve. He wondered what you were doing on his roof. I've no with his roof. It's perfect. That's what he said himself. Well, they are. What's he going on about, then? He was up there a couple of days ago. He said there was nothing wrong with it. Hey, now, hang on. There were two or three slates gone. What do you do? Tap them with the hammer? Kick them with your boot? Oh, look. There was that much batten rotten. I put new batten in and everything. I was beginning to think. Myself. Three on the flaming trot. Oh. Look, I showed his missus, didn't I? He was up there two days ago. He said there was nothing wrong with them. Well, how would he know? What is he? Some sort of expert or something? you just picked the wrong flaming fellow this time, haven't you? I mean, he's only a clerk, I know that. Well, they are. He's a clerk. Only a clerk in the borough surveyor's office, isn't he? He knows enough to know what he's talking about. Well, he's talking through his wellies now. Don't start that with me. Get off the job. Oh, hey, boss, I don't think you're being very fair, do you? I built this firm up on goodwill. You've just cost me a cartload of that. Look, I've been grafting, haven't I? It's not good enough for me. It's 30 or 40 quid to you. I had to pay him back, didn't I? Well, I was daft, that was. He's got the flaming ladders and everything else. You've landed me right in it this time, haven't you? Just as I was beginning to give it a go. You believe him, don't you? You don't believe me. It's the same old story, isn't it? You're not the easiest fellow to believe. Look, you can't have it both ways. You can't say I'm conning people and then tell me that people don't believe what I'm talking about. I mean, I showed his missus, didn't I? I took her over the road and showed her the slates. There was three in the gutter and two hanging askew. Nah, it's no good arguing the toss. Well, I'd have argued the toss if I'd have been here. Well, you weren't here, were you? Yeah, and you weren't up on that roof, no. But he was. He says he was. He's conned you. He's the one that's going round conning people. He's playing on the fact that he works for the Borough Surveyor's office. He knows you've got to keep him with them inspectors and that. He's conned you. He's just got the job done for flaming nothing. What was up with those slates? How do you mean? What was wrong with them? Well, I don't know. They were all, like, grey powdery around the edges, you know, where the nail is. You could do that with them. I don't know what makes them go like that, but that's the way they wear. Well, yeah, the water lodges under the slates. And then there's the frost. Breaks them up. What the hell? We've had enough frost, haven't we? He's probably dislodged him himself, didn't realise it. They probably came down at night. Yeah, well, you gave me the right answer about the slates. It's just about a toss-up, isn't it? Just. All right, go and get the flaming ladders. Oh, and give us a pack of them rollers, will you? Uh, yes, the wire ones are the plastic. Plastic. I may as well do myself up even to watch the television. Why don't you come down to it, Gatsby? Well... And give it a miss for a bit, I think. Mm. Don't blame you. Wouldn't go myself unless they paid me. Mind you, it's just as well that they do. Yeah, sure, you frock. Oh, oh honestly, it's lovely. Hey, it'd suit you. You're the same colouring as me. Yes, it will. Oh, oh, oh it's a knock, Annie. 
What do you think? Oh, give it here. Hey, watch it. I need that for tonight. Oh, isn't it lovely? Mm, Doesn't it fall well? Yeah. I bet that cost you a few bucks. Mm, tell her. Go on, tell her. 45 quid. Oh, it's nice, though. Hey, do you think it'd suit me? It'd look great on you. And if it looks as nice on me as it does on you, I shall be very happy. I shall follow you all the way to dress agency. <laughs> hey, what do you think, then? Very nice, that. Oh, talk about wild enthusiasm. Well, look at it, will you? Yeah, very becoming, very nice. Very nice? It should be very nice for 45 quid. 45 quid? Mm, looks every penny of it, though, mm. doesn't it? Sure, blimey. Why didn't you just sew five-pound notes together? How can you afford that on the door? I wish I could. It's not mine. It's... 45 quid. My money. That's marvellous, isn't it? That's all I need. It's my money. I work for a building firm that gives money away and you're chucking it round like yesterday's echo. It's my money and I work for it myself. Every penny of oh, it. Oh, look, I'm sorry I'll tell you what I'll do then. You look after your money if you're capable and I'll look after mine and we'll see how we go on, eh? Late chalk. Hey, you'll never guess. What? I only went to the wrong house, didn't I? You never did. I did. I was just turning the corner of our street before I realised. The street that was, you know what I mean? You're daft. Hey, I've got something for you here. Oh, that's nice. Where is it? A thermometer. There in the middle, look. It's supposed to be the wheel of a ship like. Oh, can you see that, girl? Very nice. I thought it might look nice on the mantelpiece, you know. Uh, something for the new house like. Oh, you little love, and you've been out and bought it specially for me? Well, uh, I didn't exactly buy it, no. Uh, one of the apprentices made it, but I give him a couple of bob for it, like. What apprentices? Yeah, the firm don't mind. You see, all the apprentices have to do a job like that to get the hang of that indexing head. That's what the spoke's going, you see. Yeah. Are you any wiser? Not a lot. <laughs> it's very nice, love, thanks, though. Aye. Hey, up. They've got your skivvy in again, have they? Well, uh, Ivy's taken me on as the new housemaid, haven't you? <laughs> well, we are going posh. I'll tell you what, I don't know why you just don't get wed, you and our Brian. Then you'd have job security, wouldn't you? What's up? So, if you hear screaming from next door like someone being murdered with a hammer, it's someone being murdered with a hammer. Aye, well, it's now you under the sun. Which was murdering which? Him murdering her. Oh. Any special reason? Yeah, she spent 45 quid in a frock. Oh, I've known him go berserk for less provocation. It's a nice frock, though, for a stage appearances, you know. Yeah, I don't suppose it was the dress or the 45 quid that upset him. I suppose it was flitting to the nightclub every night that really got him riled. Oh, and you know you were riling Ron last night? Well, I didn't tell you you came round here today. Did he? Mm, dinner time. I would have told you, but he didn't come back. Well, it was only at the Rovers. Well, he didn't stop long. Hey, he was all dressed up, though. Well, I see. Mm, suit and everything. Snazzy tie, anky in his pocket. But I told him to get rid of that. Made it look like something out of Burton's window. Well, what was all that in here, Doc? He didn't say, but I think he was going for a job or something. Oh. You don't think he's really giving up the cabs, do you? He didn't say, but I think it was something like that. Ah, uh, yes. Well, our run's a dark horse, isn't it? Oh, oh. That, that'll be him, then. Nice to know he's not going to have to permanently. Oh, I ain't gone, I ain't gone. I'm not decent. Oh, get off. We've seen you before. Hello, hello, come in. Ooh, suits you. Excuse me. <laughs> Would you uh, like to stay for a bite? We've got a spare place. Scales out. Wouldn't mind. I uh, heard you called round. Hmm? Yes, yeah, looking like the Northern Regional finalists. All got up like a dog's dinner. I said last night, didn't I? No. I said I had plans. You didn't say what? You know what to say about chickens. I mean, come into the kitchen and tell me. <laughs> Well, I have applied for a position. Oh, yeah? You see, I got to the stage in life and I thought to myself, what you need, boy, is a little more comfort, a little style, two things you never get on the cabs. Oh, well, tell me where you're looking, because the two things I've always wanted are comfort and style and I've never found them. And then I thought the first thing you need is money. Now, where am I ever going to get any money? Answer, short of winning the pools, no chance. So you've got to find those who've got the money. And so? You move in with them. Oh, just like that? Right. Fine house, own grounds, beautiful part of the country. It's way down south. There's a big change from here, Elsie. It's near the sea. Sixty quid in my pocket after deductions and the use of a jag one day a week. What the hell are you talking about? I'm talking about being a chauffeur. A chauffeur? That's a nice number. Well, I'll be blowed who for. Look, I've fallen on my feet, Elsie, this time. This man, he's got a, he's got a, he's got a Rolls, he's got a jag, he's got a Range Rover, and that's not counting his wife's cars yet. Oh, where did you find him? Oh, he's a... He's a fellow who, who, who made his money up here. Now, he lives down there, but he likes to come back up here occasionally. And he likes somebody who knows Manchester really well. Oh. And you've uh, got the job? I have. 
I saw him in the Midland today. You'll do for me, lads, he says. Oh, well, good for you. Hey, uh, will you have to wear a uniform? Yes, big calf the works. <laughs> hey, Ron, love to see you in that, won't you? Hey, I hope you will and all. You see, Elsie, um, there was something I wanted to talk to you about. What they really need... Well, well, they've got a housekeeper now, but she goes along with the chauffeur because they're married, the two of them, uh, to each other, like, and, and uh, that's usual in that business, and it works out best that way as a rule. And I was thinking, do you fancy it? Ron, I, I think I'm hearing you right, but I'm understanding you right. I think you are. Elsie, you just say yes, and we are set up. We really are. Yes, I'll be fine for now. Thank you. Thank you. Morning. Is it? Oh, I see. Listen, you try getting to bed at half past two and then greeting the dawn with enthusiasm. Oh, yeah, night on the tiles, was it? Working's the word I'd used. Oh, yeah, Gatsby. Well, is my contract for Caesar's Palace hasn't come through yet. That's the best offer I've got so far. You, uh, you don't think that I uh, might be getting too much for you? Do you know I'd throw some at you <laughs> if I had the strength? See you then. <laughs> <Ta -ra. laughs> Look, Mavis, before you start, I am tired, inclined to be irritable, and not exactly the sort of company you'd hope and pray for on a cold winter's morning. I never said a word. You don't have to. Your face says it all. Have I once missed my early morning turn? No. Have I asked you to do one stroke extra without showing my eternal gratitude? Rita, I wasn't going to say anything. Not about that, honest. You weren't? No. Well, you're dying, say some it. I know, symptoms. Yes. Many happy returns of the day. Oh, thanks. Thanks for the Yeah, Yeah, paper, love, please. Oh, hey, didn't you get yours this morning? Yeah, my dad did. Beat me to it again, didn't he? Oh. Um, I don't suppose my record's coming that oh, yard, is it? Oh, yes, it has. Thanks, I knew there was something. Managed to get it last night. Great. I'll pick it up at dinner, because it'll save me carting it to work and back. All oh, right, suit yourself. Thanks, <laughs> love. See you later. Sure. That flaming motorbike. Don't you know I quite like them myself? Well, you don't live next door to his girlfriend when he brings her home in the wee small hours, do you? No lift this morning? No. Mm, that didn't last long, did it? What didn't? Sir Galahad taking you to work. My idea, not his. If he had his way, the bike would be out there now. Saves your legs. Yeah, but makes a mess of me hair. And by the time I've got all that stuff on and then off again and made myself somewhat like respectable, I might as well have walked. Anyway, what's up with you? You usually look like last week's joint at this time of the morning. Thanks very much. I've got a job to find, haven't I? I thought you were going to ring that agent fella. The one who got you the sausage sizzling job in the supermarket. Sales promotion, actually. Yeah, well, it was still sausage sizzling. Are you going to give him a ring? I have. And? Don't call us. Even for sausage sizzling. Sales promotion. Did I leave my handbag down it? Oh, thank goodness for that. Oh, I had that room upside down. Oh, it must have been a good night. We never heard you come in. Oh, as a matter of fact, it was. Somewhat special. Oh, you could say that, yeah. Wrong? Yeah. Has he let on what he's up to you? Yes, he has, and he's right. He won't be taxi driving much longer. But what'll he do? He's been driving all his life. Yes, he'll still be driving. He's going shoe for him. Chauffeur, Ron, with a cap and a uniform. Living accommodation thrown in and everything. Living accommodation? Where? Torquay. Torquay? And he's definitely going. He is. Oh, hey, we're going to miss him, you know. Well, you are. Uh, maybe. What's that supposed to mean? Well, according to Ron, there's a job going for a housekeeper with the same family. And uh, if I want, I've got it made. He wants you to go with him? Yeah, well, hang on. I haven't said I'm going yet, have I? I don't know how you do it, Elsie. I really don't. Well, I said, I don't know if I'm going yet, do I? Are you? To tell you the truth, love, I honestly don't know. Oh, you're not still here. What's it look like? I thought you'd gone five minutes since you've been that quiet. What are you up to? Planning my day. Oh, Stanley, you're a window cleaner, not commander of the Western Desert Forces. Look, spending five minutes planning your day saves hours. I read it somewhere. You ought to try it. Well, I can, I might have had five minutes to waste, which I haven't. I bet the fellow what wrote that never had to graft for a living. I bet he weren't a woman neither. Now, come on, that's that fat backside and up them ladders. Oh, it. 
Where are you off to today, any road? Oh, just round here. Oh. Well, see you do ours this time. Fine advert for a window cleaner as we are. I don't get paid for doing ours, do I? Well, it's not those tizzlies off the list, I suppose. He can't earn a crust these days. Do you know, it's diabolical, is that? I mean, folk doing their own windows when they've got a professional expert on their doorstep. That's nearly a fortnight's beer money, that. What? Oh, one house? Ah, yeah, I worked it out, you know. 50p a time, once a fortnight, that's about 12 quid in 12 months. Well, you just have to find somewhere else then, won't you? Else go without a week's ale and that wouldn't come amiss. It was only you she mentioned it to in passing, wasn't it? Yeah. Said no to me. What are you getting at? I'll have to treat them like new customers, you know. <laughs> I don't ever remember you having a new customer. Of course I have. Just do the windows first and ask for the money afterwards when they're done. They can't refuse then, can they? Phew, you don't know them tills, Liz. <laughs> oh, Bert wouldn't say we'd done a 50p. I wish I had your faith in human nature, Stanley. I really do. Is that you, Ivy? It's me, Dad. Eh? I thought you were supposed to be stopping at work for your dinner. I've had it. Said in our house was lost. Yeah, if you wasn't understand as you was he, Dad? Ah, well, at least you can save us some of the row. Hello, Luke. What are you doing out? Well, you don't expect me to sleep through that, do you? You are. That lot. I said nobody could sleep through that lot. You were up before I put it on. You what? Would it have made any difference if I hadn't been? Now, would I do a thing like that? I reckon it's all right, Miss Do you mind, Brian? I've had a splitting head all morning. Not your cup of tea then, ever? No, uh, no, not exactly. No, uh, I reckon you'd have been more, uh, you know, uh, man Savannah. That's right. What do you like him, dear? He's my favourite. You're nice and smooth, you know. Go on, put it on while I've his brewing up. <laughs> Get lost, Vera. Uh, can I have a packet of those uh, chocolate buttons, please, though? Yes, a small packet. Yeah, I don't like to give her too much because of her teeth. Oh. Mind you, you can't keep them away from it altogether, can you? Looks like you were beaten to it. Eh? Emily, she were in this morning, bought self same thing, bigger packet. Mm. Do you know what? I've got to watch every word I say. I only have to mention that Tracy had looked nice in something. I've seen something in a shop, and before I can turn around, she's got it. Oh, I think she's glad to have the company. Oh, yeah, yeah. she is. And don't get me wrong, I'm glad to be stopping there. Yeah, in some ways, it's as if I've never moved at all. Mm. It's just that I don't want Tracy to grow up expecting she can get just what she wants, just like that. Mm, especially when some fella's going to come along and take the rug from under her feet. Oh, it's not that, Rita, but it's not easy for Deirdre, is it? If she's the one always saying no to Tracy, well, what's the child going to think of her? Yeah, exactly. I mean, what's it going to be like when I get a place of my own? Mm. Mind you, I must admit, it is nice to get a cup of tea in bed in the mornings. Oh, so Tracy's not the only one that's getting spoiled. <laughs> Are you kidding? I can't do a damn thing. I only have to wash up and I feel as if I'm doing something illegal. <laughs> hey, if you feel guilty about that, come round to our place, oh, kid. No <laughs> chance. <laughs> See ya. Hello. Hello, love. I've just been chatting with your daughter. You know, she makes better conversation than some adults, I know. Hey, she's not been telling you any secrets, has oh, she? Don't worry, Chuck. I'll keep my mouth shut. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Hello. Ooh, can I have a pack of them tights you saw me last night? Um, just the one. No, I better take two pairs. You know, if there was prizes given for snagging tights in that factory, I'd be on my way to Bermuda by now. Oh, I don't know. I don't reckon you've got to complain about. I saw you half past two this morning and bright as a new ten pence piece. Oh, aye. And what were you doing up at that time of night? Working, which is more than could be said of you. Uh, you're dead right. We were celebrating. We? Yeah, me and Ron. Got a new job, he has. A new job? Yeah. Oh. He's, uh, he's going chauffeuring. Chauffeuring round here? No, well, I didn't say that, did I? Well, where then? Talky. Talky? Is he moving away? Well, he's not going to be traipsing down there every day, is he? Hang on. If he's off, what have you got to celebrate? Well, he might not be the only one that's flitting. You are? Well, he must say it sounds very attractive, especially with summer coming on. You mean you're thinking of moving away as well? Oh, don't look so shocked. It does happen, you know. Besides, I haven't got all that much to lose these days, have I? Well, no, I suppose you haven't, when you come to think of it. I mean, well, it's not as if you were like Rita here, is it? What about Rita here? Oh, 
I mean, you've got your husband to think about, haven't you? And this business, and Mr Fairclough's business as well. I mean, well, Mrs Tanner ain't got any ties like that, has she? She's not wrong, you know. See you, kid. Big gob. It seems funny you answering the door. It'd be even funnier if I hadn't. You wouldn't have got paid. <laughs> you getting used to it? Yeah, just about. Mind you, there have been times when I've walked past there and even really given Tilsley shock of their lives. <laughs> Ta, love. Is, uh, is that water all right? Oh, aye. I've only got one more else to do, and I'm going for dinner. Oh, OK. Sit down. Ta, love. Did you hear that kettle boiling? Well, I wouldn't mind if you could squeeze out another cup. We're having cheese on toast if you stop it. Uh, enough for me, love, thanks. Well, tell the girls yet about the new job. Yes, she did. Oh, you're a sly one, you. We had no idea. Well, there wasn't much point in saying anything. There was something definite, was there? Well, what do you reckon? I reckon you've got it made. And if she won't go, you know to us. I didn't say I wouldn't go. I just need time to think about it, that's, that's all. something we haven't got much of. Well, it's just something I can't rush into, that's Look, all. I can't honestly see what the problem is. I really can't. Well, there isn't any as far as you're concerned, none at all. I mean, you've just chucked up a job you're not keen on. You can walk out of that bed, sit and start a new life. You can put down roots any way you like. I'm just not like that. Like what? Just pack up and walk out. I've got a good job over the road there. This place has been my home since the year dot. It's... Well, it's just not that easy. You'll have a good home down there and a good job to go to. And the beaches and the swimming and the fresh air. Of course, if you'd rather spend the rest of your life going over to that factory every morning than flogging yourself back every night again and doing that for the rest of your natural life... On intimate life, well... terms with every cobblestone in street. Yeah, spending your evenings in the rovers. Oh, that's not quite fair, Ron. There are some highlights, like stopping in and soaking her feet. Whose side are you on? Yours, Elsie. We both are. And if you don't like it, you can always come back. We can look after this place for you. I wouldn't mind stopping a few weeks in Torquay for that. You know, there's folk who pay hundreds of pounds a week for that. Elsie, I, I, I know. I, I know it's a big decision and there isn't much time. But if you're going to come with me, you'll have to go for the interview. They haven't got the job yet. You'll walk it. What's the harm in going for an interview? What's the point of me going for a job in Torquay if I haven't even thought about moving yet? If you don't go after the job, you'll have no choice. She's right, Elsie. So what are you going to do? Look, if you get the job and then you decide you don't want to go, well, you can always back up. So? What are you going to do? I'm not doing anything till I've had my dinner. Hello, Stan. Uh, I'll just turn your windows. Oh, how much? 50p. Right, can you send your note? Oh, no problem. You got the rollers later on for a pint. Huh? Aye, why not? I'll tell you what, I'll just finish my dinner. Right. And what the heck do you think you're doing? Oh, Windows, love, I'm just paying him. You're doing no such thing. You are, but he's just done them. Well, that's his funeral, isn't it? I told your other last week, Stan, that I always do my own, I always have, and I always will. But... And don't crack on that she's not said no to you about but it. But, Ivy, if he's just done them... I am not standing here arguing toss bird. But, I, I mean, you know he's done them. Why didn't you stop him? You saw him. You must have been inside while I was working. You had no intention of paying, had you? Working? Trying it on, more likely. You thought I wasn't in, didn't you? That I'd better pay up and then I wouldn't know not about it. Well, it's not working and it's not going to, so take your flipping bucket and scram before I'm tempted to tell you what to do with it. Oh, it's not much to flipping ask, is it? We can eat that paper, can't we? And what the heck's up for you, then? I did flipping Tilsley. What about her? Windows. You've been and done them, haven't you? I have. And she hasn't paid you? Ah, well, don't say I didn't warn you. Stood there without saying. She could have said. She what? She was in the flipping house, wasn't she? You can't do those windows back and front without being seen. She said never said no. She never told you to buzz off? No, oh, not until I went for the money. Oh, it's disgusting, is that? It's flipping immortal. What have you done about it? Well, dear, can I do about it? You have not let her get away with it. Elder. Oh, Elder. Hey, what are you going to 
to do? Mike's cleaning our own windows, does she? Oh, don't be daft. Come here. Don't be daft. Hell there. Right. This should make her happy, then. There's no need for that. There's every need. It's what this great nation of ours is founded on, that. Justice. Oh, what a flaming heck's going on? Oh, look at that. Somebody's going to chuck mucky water all over your windows. Who'd want to do a thing like that? Who do you flaming think? It's a million miles from here, Elsie. Well, yes, I had noticed. They won't keep that job open forever. You know what you're asking me to do, don't you? Yeah. I'm asking you to share the chance of a lifetime. You're asking me to give up me over somewhere I've never seen you. Just move off at a moment's notice. Oh, well, see. But I wouldn't ask you if I didn't think you'd fit in, would I? No, I don't think you would. So? What do you reckon? I reckon I could do with another gin and tonic. You'd think Mrs. Tanner had the worries of the world on her mind. Must be catching off that lodger of hers. Gail? I was thinking earlier what a changed girl she was since she made it up with the Tilsley boy. Though what she sees in him, I cannot imagine. No, not Gail Susie. She were in this morning. You know, honestly, Mrs. Walker, you'd think she are the only person in the world out of a job. Oh, well, you must admit, it must be very demoralising for someone of her age. It's not that she can't get one. I mean, she won't. I don't think that's quite fair. She has been trying. She were offered two jobs this morning, both starting yesterday. Well, perhaps they weren't what she wanted. Well, they weren't, but, I mean, it were a job, weren't it? A wage coming in off the backs of the rest of us. I agree with you entirely. But it's not a sentiment that a lot of the younger generation would have today, I'm afraid. Well, it flaming well ought to be, Mrs. Walker. Don't say I didn't warn you. You say I'm not going any younger. I'll clock you on. None of us are down. Many happy returns. Oh, not so loud. I don't know the world to know. What's the matter with having a birthday? One out. But when you've had as many as I have. Large got please, Fred. Okay. Oh, and uh, whatever the lovely lady on my right once. She's already got him, mate. Happy birthday, darling. You've been blabbing. Me? I didn't remember myself till yesterday. Well, how the heck? Well, how could I forget? I must say, you look lovelier every year. Hey, don't stop now. I'm going to like that. Hey, how come you knew it was her birthday, anyway? How, how could I forget? Especially as it's two days before one of the most important events in history. What's that? My birthday. Oh. Oh, cheers. <laughs> All the best, love. All the best. <laughs> Where do you think you're going? Huh? Just going out for a pint, aren't I? Right. Well, you just let me catch you supping with that Stanley Ogden and I'll tie your flaming tonsils together. Now, look, bossy knickers, I'll sup with who I like, all right? You do, but don't let her catch you, that's all. Excuse me. Hello. Hello, look, she'll pay you. Hello, there. Over Hello. here. Yes, thanks. Uh, how much do I owe you? Oh, popping and paying you later. I haven't any change on me now. <laughs> Yeah, hey, she's known her long enough. I bet she's had enough mucks long her way. Who were we telling about? Hilda Flaming Ogden. Oh, what's she been up to? Well, I told her I didn't want my windows doing, but Stan come and did them. So when he come for money, I told him what to do. So she only comes and chucks flaming mucky water all over my windows, doesn't she? That's the lovely Hilda. Well, I reckon a brick through window won't go amiss. It's only language she knows. Hey, especially if it's on top of her head. <laughs> yeah, but you see, that's what she's waiting for, isn't it? How do you mean? Well, she loves a good scrap, you know, does our Hilda. All she needs is ammunition. The more you chuck at her, the more she chucks back at you. No, there's only one way to deal with Hilda Ogdens of this world. Ignore them. What? Do now? It'll drive her up the wall. She must be dual alley if she doesn't know who did it by now. Then why hadn't she come round? That's what I'd like to know, cos when she does, I'm ready for her. Look, Hilda, don't you think you've done enough? No, I flame in hasn't. Now, look, Stanley, this is one battle we can't afford to lose. Give them an inch, they'll be rubbing us noses in it for the rest of us days. But it's not like that. He's a Tilsley. Only by marriage. Oh, they're all tarred with the same brush. Look, she's not bad. She stood up for you at that uh, strike at the factory, didn't she? Yeah, and where did that get me? I had a good job, didn't I? Until she had to come shoving her nose in and getting me that job back at the factory. Why oh, can't we love our neighbours like normal people do? Because they're not normal, are they? I think you were mad, you know, doing them yourself. I'd have gone right that elder Ogden's, I'd have got hold of her hair on, I'd better do every one. Look, I know what you would have done, dear, and I'd give you to rest, eh? And we a bit of luck, perhaps Hilda Ogden up the same and leave us in flipping beans. And what if she doesn't? I scratch your flaming eyeballs out, are you satisfied? On, That's sure more like it. Would you flipping credit it? Now, what's up? 
She's just gone back to work. Just like now, as though nothing had happened. What's up with that? What's up with it? Why, she's up to summit, isn't she? Normal folk don't behave like that. If she'd been up to summit, she'd have been round here by now. Do you reckon she's learned a lesson, then? We've won. Nobody's flaming won. What wouldn't I give her cover that filthy, stinking brew you call tea? Well, seeing as how you asked so nicely. And where have you been? I've been expecting you an hour since. Ah, uh, yes, we'll have to go and see somebody. Girl's not in, is she? No, she's gone straight to Brian's. Where? Where what? Where have you been? You said nothing about going anywhere this morning. Well, because I didn't know, did I? I didn't know till dinner time, did I? Well, if it's got nothing to do with me. Oh, yes, it has. It's got a lot to do with you. I'm Gail. I've been for this interview, you see? I've been to see a man about a housekeeping job. You've been for the interview? Yeah, well, don't look so startled. You talked me into it, didn't you? Well, how did you get on? Oh, Ron's right. It's a doddle. Job's mine if I want it. So you're going? Yeah, I said I'd let him know. When? Tomorrow. Well, you must be thinking about it, or you wouldn't have been for the interview, would you? Yeah. I am. We'll do these, Ivy. You will? Yeah, of course we will. Give your mum a rest. Well, I'll not put up much of a fight, Gail. You working tonight, Dad? No. Are you and Mum going out tonight? Out? Out where? Well, I just thought you might plan to know what Rover's like. Come on. Listen, I prefer an hour soaking up and bathing myself. And if you were thinking of bringing in your mates, so I'd you could... Forget it. Well, I wasn't. Are you going to give us a hand, or aren't you? You know, it's not a bad idea that you know. Warrant. Well, have a few of the lads around. Oh, if I'm in the way. Oh, don't be daft, you know. A bit of a party like. Listen, if we're going to have a party, we're going to have it for all of us, not just for you and your mates. It's only fair, Brian. Yeah, hey, I'll tell you what, we could have it now. Now? Yeah, just us four. I mean, let's face it, nobody else is going to come, are they? You've done now, but upset them since we moved in here. Oh, come off it, Bert. I've had odd word at all, I admit. <laughs> well, it'd be a good chance to make it up then, wouldn't it? Sure there's no heart feelings. Yeah, of course it would. Hey, why don't you do that, Mum? Go on, ask them all. What do you think, Bert? Yeah? Why, does it make any difference? No, not a lot. All right, go on, we'll ask them. We'll ask them all. With one exception. That elder flaming Ogden. <sighs> I just can't get used to the idea. What's that? You were sitting here like this, not asking me to fill your flask, not cadging a cheese sandwich, not dashing off to work, and not even drinking tomato juice. Oh, I can hardly understand it myself. That cab was like a second home to me. It's all happened so fast. Well, you've got to move fast in this life, else if you're going to get anywhere. I've been dreaming about something like this for years. Yeah, that's the difference between you and me. I hadn't even thought about it till now. Oh, there's no difference, really. It's just only that... When the chance comes along, you must recognise it for what it is. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Oh, who the heck can that be? Hey, will I go? <laughs> no, it's all right. You sit where you are. Hello, my darling. Yeah, oh, come in. You're free to death out there. Shut the door, will you? Hello. Hi. Hello, Ron. I didn't expect to see you here. Have you parked your cab round corners or neighbours? No, I've sold it. Sold it? Yeah, I'm leaving here at the end of the week. Oh, so soon? Well, life's too short to hang about, isn't it? Well, we thought we might just drag you out to celebrate Her Highness's birthday. Oh, isn't that a lovely happy birthday? birthday. Well, Thank while you. you're here, you might as well have a drink with us. Okay. Well, of course, we're not interrupting anything. Oh, you couldn't have come at the better time. Why is that, then? Well, you're not the only ones with summit to celebrate. They're not? No, they're not. I mean, you're coming with me to Torquay. Looks like it, doesn't it? Like the man said. What have I got to lose? Mm. <laughs> morning. Morning. Oh, the sun is shining. All is well with the world. Oh, my word, we are in a cheerful mood today. And why not? It's spring, oh, almost. Well, I wouldn't say that. I mean, we've all marched to get through yet, and March can be awful round here. Well, maybe it can round here, but not in Torquay, it can't. In Torquay, Mavis, even as I speak to you at this very moment, the first ripples of spring are rustling through the shrubberies, dappling the very golden sands with the first caress of the warm south. Oh, oh, you make it sound wonderful. It is wonderful, and I'm going to be there tomorrow morning. Where is it? Today you go? Yeah. You see, I'm going to collect my boss's Rolls Royce at his factory for him, then I'm going to drive it down to Torquay, so I'll be arriving in some style. Oh, what about Elsie when she leaves? Oh, not for a week yet. Oh. She's got lots of things to organise. Yeah. Hey, this man that you and Elsie are going to work for, is he a millionaire? I don't know, Mavis. He certainly lives like one. Oh, it's all very exciting. <laughs> well, it all sounds very cosy to me, you and Elsie living together. No, it's not a bit like that, Rita, and you'll know it. We're living under the one roof. We're not living together. What a shame. Oh, Rita. You've not actually met your new employer to be our gather. No, it was all done through this agency, you see. Ron's met him. He seems a very nice chap. 
Yeah, there's all his textile mills down here and he's got this great big house up in Torquay. It's absolutely wonderful. I've seen the photographs. You'll find it's another way of life, you know. Quite, quite different from life as it's lived round here. Yeah, I've never actually been to Torquay. I've been through it, of course, and what I saw was lovely. Devon. Glorious Devon. You really must try to see Babacombe. Yeah, nice, is it? Ah, oh, I've got very personal memories of Babacombe. Someone I met there. Memories, one might almost say, of what might have been. Well, anyhow, I really do envy you making this new start in life, and you'll certainly have the benefit of beautiful surroundings. Well, I'm hoping to get quite a bit more out of it than that, Mrs Walker. I hope you will, dear. You sound doubtful, are you? No, I don't want to be discouraging. It's just that I can't help recalling the time when I myself was on the brink of leaving these parts. Could have taken over a beautiful house in Cheshire, you know. Yeah, I seem to remember you planning to make that move. Why didn't you go? Too late. I realised that in time. Too much of my life was invested here. This is the mistake, you know, that a lot of people make when they retire and they move away. I've seen it happen so often. They up sticks, take some seaside bungalow somewhere where they've no friends, no roots. Some can do it, but many can't. I have no intention of retiring just yet, Mrs Walker, nor for a good many years to come. <laughs> of course not. Don't misunderstand me. It's just that I think one reaches a stage when it's too late to uproot oneself. It's not easy to transplant a mature tree. Somehow it needs its native roots. Excuse me. Pint a bit of Fred. Make that a pint and a half, Fred, and I'll get them. Eh? I said I'll get that pint for you. What's the catch? No catch. Look, your missus and my missus have had a bit of a barney, right? Aye. Right. Well, has it got out to do with you and me? Have you and me fallen out? Are you and me going to f have got out to fall out about? No. No, well, that's all I'm saying, you know what I mean? Look, it doesn't matter to me if your missus and my missus want to fall out all day. Now, are you supping that pint with me or what? <laughs> yeah. Cheers. <laughs> Excuse me, please. Uh, Mike, could I, could I just have a word with you? Yeah, sure. Give me a minute. Right, what's your problem? You know this move I'm making to Torquay? Well, supposing, I, I'm just saying supposing. Supposing it doesn't work out. Yeah? Well, I'm a fix for getting my job back. Well, you wouldn't be fixed at all, love. I've already advertised it. As a matter of fact, I'm interviewing two people next week. I see. What's the matter? You must be fully certain about this job in Torquay. Otherwise, you wouldn't be going. Yeah, Look, but you see... Jack Rowley, the smashing feather forward. Aye, we're a good forward line with that. Mm. It was Mitten, um, Stan Pearson, yeah. Morris, yeah. Rowley. Who was the outside right? Delaney. He were a good one, wasn't he? Oh, aye, Jimmy yeah. Delaney, yeah. This lot's not a patch on them, you know. Not a patch. Hey, we'd like to go and see him this afternoon. Huh? Aye. Why not, Stan? Aye, yeah. Tell you the truth, I'll be glad to get make myself scarce this afternoon. Our Ivy's driving me mad getting the house ready for this housewoman, you know uh, what I mean? Our Hilda moans if I'm not there and says I'm under her feet if I'm there. I know Ivy's just the same. <laughs> hey, by the way, while I think about it, you are coming tonight, aren't you? Oh, I thanks very much. Yes. Cheers. Cheers. Your dinner's in the oven. Another five minutes of dipping on the fire back. Where's my scarf? What scarf? Your football scarf, you know, the uh, red and white one. Oh, that old thing. Wrapped round the waste pipe under the sink. Ah, oh, Fred, the neck, young man. Well, it were you what put it there. New Year's Day, when United had just lost three on the trot. You said it were only fit for lagging pipes. What do you want with the ten-year-old? I'm going to United. You what? You're not, you know. You're coming with me to the laundrette. I can't. I've made arrangements now. I'm going with someone. Friends. Who? Bert Tilsley. Bert? After what that woman said to me? Look, Bert's all right. He bought me a pint. Oh, well, of course, that explains everything, doesn't it? He bought you a pint. You've sold yourself, haven't you? You'd sell me for a pint, you oh, would. Oh, give it a rest, will you? Bert's all right. He said I can do their windows in future. You're not doing their windows. They can do their own windows. Now, look, shut up, will you? So a bit of peace and quiet, this row between you and Ivy. I said shut up! Finish! I've just got time to have my dinner before I got match. There you are. I hope that's strong enough for you. Just as it comes, love. I only hope this Fraser fella's as easy to please as you are. Fraser? Is he the guy that you're going housekeeping for? Yeah. Um, Ron's met him. He says he's a very nice chap. Well, Ron's a pretty good judge, isn't he? Yeah, well, whether or not 
I won't be breaking my back for him all the hours that God sends. I've been into all that. I'm going to have plenty of time off. Well, knowing you, you'll adjust the job to make it nice and comfortable for yourself. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So get all mapped out, won't I? Is something bothering you, love? Me? No, not a thing. I've known you a long time, and I think there's something bothering you. Is it this job? To tell you the truth, love, over these last 24 hours, I've had a few doubts. Len, am I making a fool of myself? Only you can answer that. I know. I don't know what to think anymore. You know, I thought this was a good move, or only, only... Only what? Well, I had a talk with Annie Walker today. She made sense for the first time in a long time, and something she said went home. She said, it's a mistake to uproot yourself when... Well, not actually when you're getting on. She didn't have the nerve to say that to her face. But, well, when you've been born in the street and, and lived in it all your life, does it make sense to finish it in Torquay? That depends on the person. Ah, that's true enough and all. But if I am making a mistake, I'm going a hell of a long way to make it, aren't I? You can always come back. What, me? No, thank you, with a tail between my legs. And Hilda Ogden, of all people, she said today, all you're doing is getting a job skivvying, just like her, and that rankle then. Well, it was meant to, wasn't it? Hilda tries her damnedest with you. Yeah, I know, and sometimes she gets through and all. Shall I tell you what I think? What I think is that the truth is you don't want to go, and you're trying to find some good reasons. Yeah, well, OK. Well, if I'm not going to go, I've got to find some good reasons, haven't I? No, that's not the point. Not in a thing like this. It's it's what's right for you, deep down, whether it's reasonable or unreasonable. You don't want to go, do you? No, Len. I don't want to go. But I've told Ron that I will. And I just don't want to let him down. You're so. not going to do Ron any favours, you know, by keeping up a pretense like that. I mean, supposing you take the job and you hate it. How long are you going to keep that covered up? How about that? How's that for a car? Beautiful. Uh, Listen, it's got everything. Have a look inside. It's got, it's got a radio, it's got a telephone, it, it's got a cocktail bar. Oh, yes, well, I've got to talk to you. That's why I phoned you. Oh, something wrong? Come on, inside the house. Yeah, yeah, listen. Hold on. Um, if I come out and find anything wrong with this car, I'll have somebody's guts for garters, right? And his bones for a set of dominoes. Now, on the other hand, if you uh, gentlemen would mind this car for me for ten minutes, there's ten peer boy in it, all right? Okay. <laughs> Isn't she beautiful? I want to talk to you, Anna. I hope you didn't mind me ringing you at Mr. Fraser's office. Oh, sure. Listen, Elsie, you wouldn't believe what it's like behind that wheel. She goes like a dream. Ron, we've got to have a talk. I hope I can trust those kids if they're scratched like Oh, power. to hell with the car for a minute. I'm sorry, Ron. What's wrong? What's happened? Nothing's happened. No, I can't beat about the bush. I'm not going with you to Torquay. I'm not going. Something has happened. Nothing's happened except that I've changed my mind. I'm sorry, Ron. But it's all fixed up. I mean, you were looking forward to it. You said yes, yes, yesterday. You said what a good move it was. I know I did. I thought it was what I wanted, but it isn't. I just can't go through with it. I, I don't understand it. I mean, you were so happy about it all. Look, Kelsey, there are so many things going for us down there. We could have a great life. You could. I couldn't. Why, Elsie? Why, why have you changed? I don't think I have changed, Ron. When I thought this move, this job was OK for me, I, I think I was just fooling myself. You're just having last-minute qualms, Elsie. That's understandable. Oh. No, it's not that. I want to try and explain. I want to try and make you understand. You see, it, it's something to do with leaving here. It's... Well... I know it's not much, but this is my home. But you've got a home to go to in Torquay, I guarantee it. It's more than that. All my friends are here. Except me. I'm going, Elsie. I hope you'll come with me. But if you don't, I'm still going. There's a future down there. It's what I want. Oh. 
I wish you could feel the same way as you about it. I tried. But I can't. I thought I'd worked it all out. And it's... it's just not me. I just don't see what you've got against it all. I mean, it's a better way of life altogether, a good job. I think it's something to do with the job. I... Well, I know what I can do and what I can't do, and some things I can put my heart into and some things I can't. And one thing I know, I'm nobody's housekeeper. Oh, Mr. Fraser's not a bit like that. He's generous. He's not petty tyrant. You couldn't ask for a better boss. Look, I'm just not cut out to be a servant. And whatever name you call it by, that's what it is. A servant's job. That's a very old-fashioned way of looking at it. Yeah, well, maybe I'm an old-fashioned woman. I had an auntie once who was in service. She told me all about it, too. Oh, Elsie, look, it's not like that today. It's just a job. And a better job than most. I can't argue with you, Ron. I'm not saying what I feel is right. But it's the way I feel. I don't want to go. I brought you a bit of a present, kid. It's a pop dog. I thought it looked nice on your mum's book, Well, I thought it looked nice with other ones. <laughs> Well, as long as it will cock its leg up all the side of my clock, well, it'll be all right. <laughs> there you are, love. Scotch and ginger, right? Mm. Are you on your own? I told you our Jack won't be coming. You know what it's like, kid. Can't drag him from that Conservative club on a Saturday night. You are. I thought your Jack were red hot labour. Oh, he is. Relax, like here. Look, Conservative. <laughs> Evening up. Hello. Hey, up. Boss in here. We'll have to watch his P's and Q's now. I'm not the boss tonight. Not on Ivy's men, are they? Huh? See what you can do with him. Oh, cheers. Oh, it's hard. You know better, don't you? Yeah, we met in the pub, aren't we? Make yourself at home. I'll you tell you. It's going to be dead boring, this party. Hey, why don't we duck out? I got my bike to end up lovely. Let's have a burn up. Well, we're stopping you. And put your face, Ray. Do you know something? Now and again, you sound just like me, ma'am. I'll take that as a compliment. Not a lot would, but I will. Where the green hankies? That part. Well, not iron. Well, I'm not ironing your nose rags. Oh. What have you got your best suit on for, Annie Road? Where do you think you're going? Kelsey's party. You are? I've been invited, so come on, get dressed. Oh, no. I'm not going near that house. Oh, hell no. In the first place, even if I wanted to go, which I don't, I've not been asked. Well, I've been invited. That's the same thing. Oh, no, it's not. If they'd wanted me, they should have asked me. <sighs> All right, then. We're not going. Oh, you go. You go and have a good time with your new friends. They've asked you. You better go run into them. I'm framing well, well. Don't wait up for me. I might be late. She really fancies your Brian, doesn't she? Poor girl. Well, I'm not talking about next door's cat. Hey, there's lots of girls fancy our Brian. He is a good-looking lad. I reckon you'll be hearing wedding bells there, Ivy. They, them two will be making your grandmother before you're much older. Doctor, that our brain's not serious about her. Anyway, he's too young for old like that. Oh, right, right. Hey, Stanley, come on in, lad. I've come always been here. Oh, great. Hello, are you waiting on? I'm not of you, I'm a flipping guest like oh, you are. I know, I think it's now. Hey, Stan, That's this nice. can's been open. Ah, oh, well, uh, I thought I'd better try it to see if it was all right, you know. Yeah, yeah. right. the nightclub queen in this part of the world these days. You know, living it up, the expense account crowd. I changed as good as the rest. Didn't think this was your scene. Too humdrum. You're right. There's no talent about. Funny. I was thinking exactly the same thing. If I remember correctly, you could dance. Yeah, can you? Can't remember. Come on, I'll give you a reminder. Right. Hey, up. Who invited fat ones? If you are referring to Stanley Ogden, you can forget it. I invited him, and I don't want any argy-bargy because he's a neighbour, right? You're too soft, Bert. That's your trouble. Yeah, I know. Hello, love. Hiya. Oh, it's nice of you to come. Good morning, Hello, darling. Chuck, come in. What do you want to drink? Um, I'll have a dry martini, please. One dry martini. Come Does it give you a funny feeling coming to look round your old house? I know it would me, love. I couldn't go back to Inkerman Street now. Yeah, well, it does feel a bit funny, yeah. Well, it's not as though you've got far to come. It's only next door. Yeah, and I'll not be stopping there so long, I hope, either, Mr Tilsley. Oh. Mm. Well, what do you usually do on a Saturday night, maybe? Me? Well, sometimes stop in. Sometimes go out. I go to the pictures sometimes. Well, I'm always intending to go to the pictures, but somehow, I don't know, I never seem to manage to get there these days. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. I'm 
picture, the last picture I saw was one flew over the cuckoo's nest. It was very good. I sometimes think I should go more often. Yeah, well, usually the only place I ever manage to get to on a Saturday night is the Rovers, about an hour. Apart from that, it's just feet up in front of the telly. Because I like cooking, as you know, but, well, most nights it doesn't seem worth going to all that trouble just for me. But on Saturdays, I always like to try out a new recipe. You must come round sometime, Ken. Yes, I'd like to. That would be very nice. Oh. It would be nice to get away from my own cooking for once. And even nicer on the nights when it's Uncle Albert's turn. <laughs> oh, yes, sir. All right. I say, don't you think you could make a speech of welcome to Mr. and Mrs. Tilsley? Me? Well. Oh, must it be me? Yes, well, you know how to do these things. I suppose so. All right. <laughs> Uh, Brian, Brian, could you just turn the music down a sec? <laughs> right, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, could I just have your attention for a minute? Sorry to hold up the festivities, but it won't be for long. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we're all here this evening because we've been asked by Mr. and Mrs. Tilsley, uh, Ivy and Bert. Oh. <laughs> and in return, I would like to say, on, on behalf of all of us here, that... Well, I hope this house will be a very happy one for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And we're very glad to welcome you as neighbours. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you'll raise your glasses, we'll drink a toast to Ivy and Bert. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for oh, Anne oh, yeah. Brian. <laughs> right. Ladies and gentlemen, the Tilsley. The Tilsley. <laughs> no, she hasn't. Run out of drink then, eh? Can't be much of a do if they've run out of drink already. She hadn't chucked me out and never run out of drink. I'll come back and fetch you. Oh, no. No, I'm not going where I'm not asked. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, I've never been one to push in where I'm not wanted. Look, come on, love. They're all asking where you yeah. uh, Where's your illa? That's what I'm saying. Oh, aye, that's all very well. Come on, love. You're missing a good do. Give us ten minutes while I get ready. <laughs> and don't be too long. Because her beer runs out. He's not coming here tonight, our Jan. All right. He won't be anywhere near here tonight. If I went home now, you don't want to see him till tomorrow morning. All right. Not that he bothers what I do, any road. Uh, What's up? I'm feeling a little bit peckish. I'll uh, just go and get myself a sarnie. You're supposed to be helping me. Ah, I'm helping myself. <laughs> Hello, hello, hello. We were just getting supper Looks more like an orgy to me. Mind you, there's a lot of it about, you know. I think the council have bumped something in the water. <laughs> well, you can't have been drinking much of it. I'd uh, better go and change the record. I'm bored. Oh, thanks very much, mate. Well, if you're bored, I'd better do something to liven things up a bit. In the meantime, how about a couple of fresh drinks, eh? Okay. Brian, put something on a bit smoochy, will you? Okay. You? <laughs> Hi. Hello. How about a dance? Yeah. Come on now. <laughs> Not nice. Not nice. Everybody was asking for me. I only said that to get the. Uh... You what? Look, you're here now. <laughs> you know my wife, don't you? Hello, love. Glad to meet you. Oh, thank you very much, I'm sure. Right. Hey, Brian, get Mrs. Ogden a drink, will you, son? Yeah, what would you like? Uh, a pot and lemon, please. Hey, now listen, don't you start anything. Did you invite her? I invited him, and then he rode up. I've just told her she's welcome. Too soft, Mert. That's always been your trouble. Am I? Well, I'll tell you some up for now. It's never been your trouble. You're not soft, are you? Oh, come on. Let's enjoy ourselves, eh? Right. Hello, Stan. Oh, hello. Hilda. Evening. I'd uh, like to wish you all the best in your new house. Thank you. Would you like a drink? Uh, yes, you'd be glad to get in me a port and lemon. Uh, we've got no port. I thought ginger wine would be the next best thing. Oh. <laughs> oh, well, it all goes down the same road, doesn't it? <laughs> well, uh, 
Here's all you wish yourself and many of them. Cheers, Cheers. Albert. Cheers. Cheers. You must be getting pretty bored. Well, I mean, you don't get out and about much these days, do you? I'm wearing a little track from home to the corner shop and back again. Well, how about coming a bit further afield one of these nights, eh? Are you asking me out? Yeah. Surprise you, did you? Ah, it's more of a shock than a surprise. I mean, the girls around here reckon you're dangerous. Yeah, but that doesn't bother you, does it? Ah, no, not particularly. Tell you what, I'll think about it. I hope you'll be all right driving all that way in the dark. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. I'm used to it. If I get tired, I'll just pull off the road for a couple of hours. I suppose I'd better get started. You know, I wish you all luck in the world with your job. I hope you know that, Ron. Sure, I know that. Elsie, um... I know we never talk much about marriage. It didn't seem important oh, to... Oh, No, 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 no. Hang on. If it's marriage you want, I can get a divorce. Marriage but... isn't what I'm after. Honest, Ron. You know, these last few months, I've seen everything. I mean, wonderful. You've given me a lot, you know? I miss you too, Ron. Very much. Yeah, it's kind of sad that it all has to come to an end. Oh, come on. It's not as fine as all that. We'll keep in touch, won't we? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Hey, look, I, I, I hate goodbyes. Even to say so long. And, and don't come out there, will you? It's too cold, you know? Bye, Alice. Bye, Ron. Ron. Take care of yourself. Classic Coronation Street is back at the same time tomorrow when Alf has some news for Rini. Next tonight on Plus, the news is we've 60 minutes of romantic choices. Blind date. Don't go away. <laughs>